Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to Beacon, our alien horror TTRPG live play thing with the stream punks here. Uh, we're back and uh, going to be jumping into our game session tonight back on Jinx Colony. Before we do, we're just going to go ahead and roll through our announcements real quick to see if we have any. Does anybody have any announcements before we jump back into our story this evening? It's a, it's been pretty quiet, in all honesty. Oh, nobody? Okay, great. Well, we'll just move on then. Oh, no, <laughs> go ahead, Caitlin. What do you got? Uh, so this weekend, I went to a direct action training uh, in my city. It was very, very cool. Um, not relevant to the announcement, but they, we all had to mask and test beforehand, which was lovely. Um, but uh, I've had a lot of people, I've been talking to a lot of people about uh, ways to help and ways to get involved and uh, ways to help out po politically in an activism way and learn about organizing. Uh, and the goodie bag they left us with at the end of that training was a Google Drive full of tons and tons of resources and mm. uh, readings and uh uh, like buzzwords and things you should know and ways to get involved in just like organizing from the ground up 101. Uh, right and on. I posted a link to that on my Twitter yesterday or today or something like that. I'll, I'll boost it again. But um, if that's something you're interested in, I highly recommend you checking it out. There's a lot of really, really good uh, information in there. Sweet. Okay. Thank you, Caitlin. Anybody? Uh, yes, Noir. Yes, uh, nominations for the Crit Awards opened up today. Uh, so if you want to support your favorite actual players and your favorite shows, uh, going to the Crit Awards Twitter channel is a uh, Twitter profile. Um, it's a great way to do it. They have the link there. Um, uh, I I'm pushing for uh, I'm pushing for certain uh, shows, Perseverance, mm -hmm. Beacon, you know, some others. Keep so, it going, uh, please. Yeah, so please, 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 uh, just. Uh, go ahead, take a quick look there. And also, uh, I'm just uh, announcing this because it, it makes my partner very happy. Uh, this morning, uh, this Saturday on Morning Ritual, we have a special guest, Chad the Bird, who is a puppet. So if you want to see us interview a puppet for two hours, uh, come check it out over on Critical Misses. Thanks. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> Always the Trailblazers, Critical Misses. I love it. Um, all right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Noir. Uh, does anybody else have anything they'd like to to alert our audience to before we jump into all the the loving and relaxation that will be tonight's game session? Nobody, huh? Oh, you look like you want to say something. Yes, Sam. Aliza's back, and I'm excited. All right. With that, let's jump back in to the next chapter of Beacon. Welcome back to Jinx Colony, where the crew of the Ilios has settled down to try to resolve an issue that was originally just supposed to be a pick up and go situation, but has instead has erupted completely into a hostage situation. You've all settled here and have been slowly piecing together what the environment is here on Jinx, and it has not been very clear. And it seems like it's getting more and more dire as we go. When we last left off, what you have established is that somewhere in this large facility, there are people that are either being held hostage or have been separated from the main group of the uh, administrator and chief of security who made it past in a firefight when they were trying to reach the exits, the front of the facility. With their help, you've managed to put some things together. In the previous moments leading up to where we are right now, you came across what would appear to have been an injured member of the pirate crew. Now, interestingly enough, it doesn't look like he would suffered any kind of gunshot wound. In fact, it looks like he had been attacked by some kind of animal and had a pretty disgusting wound across his gut. After having him retrieved and brought back to the safe lines at the front of the facility, Doc did his best to make a case for saving this man's life. Unfortunately, Nakamura had different plans and decided that the pirate who didn't deserve to be spared. It was distracting the doctor from the people that actually needed help, the Weyland-Yutani employees. And in that conversation, 
before the doctor could react whatsoever, Albright, only a few feet away, witnessed a murder as Nakamoto pulled his gun and shot the man in the head at point blank. There were some words exchanged and Nakamura, in a moment of revealing himself, kind of uh, Nakamura unmasked, one might say. He is the chief of security of a Weyland yutani facility, and you've all gotten a good snapshot at just how brutal his methods are. And you, Albright, have been left with the realization that Nakamura is completely unmoved by your passionate words. You became aware in our last session that you were speaking to a cold, died-in-the-wood killer. When we last left off, the others had heard the gunshot in the neighboring room. It's the distant muffled pop of a single round. It doesn't require an insight check to guess what may have just happened. Assuming the doctor is okay, it's very likely someone was just executed. Now, Martha was standing just a few feet away from Doc when this happened. And as a quick recap for Eliza, Martha's hand dropped to her pulse rifle when this happened. And she looked to the doctor to find out how Albright was taking this. Albright, of course, got in Nakamura's face. Nakamura simply said, don't. Nothing came to blows. Nobody pulled any weapons. But where we are picking up, where we last left off, is this moments later. This man's blood spray is still spattered all over your white coat, Albright. You were only about two feet away from him. Your left ear is still ringing from the sound of a gunshot that took place not just a few feet away from you. Nakamura stares at you evenly, without animosity and without compassion, like he's waiting. Um, eventually, as the moment drags on for those awkward few moments where it crosses over the threshold of is something going to happen and into the realm if somebody doesn't say something, something might happen. Kelly intercedes as the station administrator, Nathan Kelly, steps forward and says, all right, all right, um, let's, let's just take a a breath here. We're all having to make some pretty dramatic decisions in order to survive this. And Nakamura is just doing his job. The pirates would have likely been probably put to death for what they're doing anyway. Isn't that right? I mean, that's what the law would have said. And then I'm not saying that we're judge, jury, and executioner, but we are in a survival situation here. So let us let us just take a step back for a moment and and focus on what we have to get done still. There are innocent people in the station who are not or, or, or who, who, who might be wounded, right? So let's focus on that. And then afterwards, we can have this discussion. How does that sound to everybody? Yes? Doctor? Good? Yes? <sighs> that sounds great, Kelly. Okay. Martha moves her hand away from her pulse rifle and kind of calmly looks at them all and nods. Right. Now, I, if I remember correctly, because it only happened a few minutes ago, but we have two team members that are still stalking through the darkness trying to find our wayward people. So um, let's just wait for their return. Nakamura, I think since there's nothing else to do here, if you want to return to helping them or whatever you all would like to do, What do, you keep do it... with your dead? <clears throat> Excuse oh. me, sir. What do you do with your dead? Oh, um, you know, uh, I'm I'm the one that's useless around here right now. So why don't I uh, figure something out with this? Um. Oh, do we need anything off of him? Perhaps um, weapons. He, he seems like he's got weapons, and he points at the corpse. We should see what he has on him. Perhaps that might enlighten us to his demise, or at least to the mindset of his compatriots. And so this is not a this, this is a, it's a person. One that we had a disagreement with, but still a person. You're right. You're absolutely right. I should, I should, uh, I, I should remember that. Yes. 
um, this person probably has something. Uh, ooh, does he have a radio? Isn't that something like counter ops would do? And he squats down and starts searching the guy and goes, oh, he's and searches his jeans a little bit, pulls out what looks like a small data pad, tries to activate it, nothing happens. And does anybody want to help me here or should I do this? I got it. Martha comes over. Right. Yes. You colonial marine. You should be the one handling this. You're you're pretty much the law here at this point. So I will stand back and watch that happen. I take the data pad. Mm, pick it up. Uh data pad looks like it's cracked. Like it's blunt force has broken the screen. It might be possible to retrieve the data on it, depending it depends on what the state is, but for the most part it looks like it's broken. It's not gonna function on its own. Hmm. Uh, does it have battery? Can I tell if it'll power on? Mm, as you press down on the activation, nothing seems to happen. Doesn't mean you can't retrieve anything off of it, but... Okay. I'll start working on it, just okay. in the background. Okay. Um, Nakamura is, squats down and looks the man over and reaches forward and grabs what looks like um, something that wasn't noticeable at first because it blends in so well with this man's black fatigues but he holds up what looks like a torn strap it takes a moment doc you're not as familiar but martha you you've seen this thousands of times this man probably had an assault rifle of some kind some kind of weapon that he had strapped to his body maybe a smg of some kind but a, a weapon to be sure what's curious is those straps those can hold hundreds and hundreds of pounds. Those are those tight, like powerful straps that you put on a duffel bag. This has been torn. Looks like it's been cleaved right through. It's got frayed edges all over it. About the same length of ends to right about where the wound is. Whatever injured him cleaved right through this thick, heavy strap for this weapon as well. And Nakamoto makes note of that and then glances back to see if anybody else is seeing what he's seeing. Uh, Martha definitely is looking, but doesn't say anything. Hmm. He takes a deep breath and stands up and says, We have to assume that there's something more than just a pirate here at work. Something don't really, say. Something strong enough to rip through that strap. And what looks like poor quality Kevlar. You see pieces when he points and says, doesn't look like it made it all the way through, but enough. Doc, do you think it's uh, somewhere, uh, something we've met before? Uh, think that I am <clears throat> at the point where I would factor that into all of our common plans. I, I'm not certain if it is a, I'm not certain that it is a Zeno, but I sure would have loved to, to have been able to ask this young man. Yeah. Would have been nice. Nathan Kelly's eyes widen and goes, Z wait, 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 wait. Zeno? Oh, you, yes. You, 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 <laughs> you can't mean that you think. And then he looks over at Nakamura and then back. You're, you're not saying that she's brought us. That, that couldn't possibly. I'm telling you that your security guard here has put us in a position where we don't know what we're facing when we could have. And if we are facing what I intuit that we may be facing, we got a lot more problems than a trigger happy security guard and a pirate with an attitude problem. So y'all ready to listen now? Of course, no, uh, please. Uh, yes, please, whatever you have to say. My job here is to save lives. Fixing a bullet wound is easy, but what we have encountered before makes my job entirely more difficult. I need us to be a team. 
because if we're facing what me and Martha have encountered before, ego will get us all killed. So you think it's a xenomorph? About that point would be probably as long as I could stretch this scene before I'm sure <laughs> Isaac or Tig would probably want to know what the hell that gunshot was. Uh, we, I believe we checked in. Um, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Tig uh, said Tig, report. Did, Tig said report. Oh, that's and, correct. And Martha you immediately called it in. in. Thank you yeah, for reminding yeah, yeah. me. Yeah. So we're all, we're all, we're, okay, up cool. to, we're up to, yeah. In which case I might switch back to you all because while this okay. has been unfolding, what has been happening in the neighboring room? You guys are actually, you're two rooms away now because you've gone mm -hmm. through that first, what looked like crew quarters. And now you've entered into that industrial room with the belts and manufacturing equipment yeah. all over the place. Isaac, if I remember correctly, you took the high ground. You decided to go check out the second floor to get a better view of everything. You looked around and you didn't see anything from a failed observation check, but there's a lot of shadows here and a lot of equipment. You were able to spot the body of that man leaning against the machinery, but nothing else is popping out to you. Curiously enough, despite the noise, though, that's been made with the gunshot, you don't hear any any further noise after the big grand announcement over the loudspeakers. Um, we haven't found the source of the two PD ch T chips, nor have we yet found the security trunk line that we initially came in here to try to fix. Mm. Um, can, if I'm just a little quiet for a moment, mm -hmm. can I hear, because Tig's uh, motion tracker makes a mm -hmm. noise, uh, can I hear that in he as, as Tig is moving around? Occasionally between movement and the standard sounds of the ambient atmosphere, even in the shutoff state, the in the machines are in a standby mode, but they are still making sounds of machines that have power, but that are in standby. So there's a low thrum hum to some of the uh, machinery around here and some of the distribution machines in their standby mode. It creates a little bit of this undercurrent of ambience, but not so loud that you can't occasionally hear the from the motion tracker. Okay. Uh, well, I can't really fix anything until I can spot it. Honestly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I will keep looking. Okay. As you, you're just basically going to be spending this. I mean, it's a, it's a tough gig because you are having to in, in this incredibly difficult darkened area, basically feel about and look for signs that you can find the main line that'll get you power to some of the security around here. Um, what are you doing while this is happening, Tig? Um, mostly keeping an, keeping an eye out for them um, so that they can work and not have to worry about also watching their own back. Okay. Meanwhile... If they, t if they tell me what they're looking for, I could keep an eye out for that, but I think for the most part, I'm just keeping guard. Shuffling through. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, this continues for a few moments. As you're moving through this place, the maddening sound of just your shoes along the smooth concrete floor here in this distribution area. Maddening because it is so quiet outside the thrum and the popping of the motion detector. At about the same moment, you see a brief, ever faint blip appear on the very cornered edges of the motion detector. Everyone from the front to where you are all standing hear a sudden eruption of gunfire echoing in the facility. It sounds like multiple guns going off. One of them is clearly fully automatic from what you can hear, Tig. An assault weapon of some kind. Ringing out. You can hear it loudly. Then there's a banging sound and shouting. More gunfire. And then a brief moment and everyone hears a murderous blood curdling scream that abruptly comes to an end. And then more gunfire. 
Can we localize the sound at all? Can we hear where in this facility it's coming from? Based on what you know, it sounds like it is basically coming from the directions you would expect in the northeastern quadrant of the facility. Where exactly, you're not sure, but the last you heard is pirate activity was last seen within the building in sort of that upper area. You don't have an exact idea of where, but this could be from where you all are, who are hearing it much clearer than everybody at the front of the facility. This could be maybe 150 feet away from where you are on the other side, maybe in another room. The sound is traveling quite well. If you would like, you can use this moment to roll your observation check to see one more time if you can find any of those hard lines you were looking for. Ox point, please. Sure, let me break please. out the ox points. I'm not rolling, but I would like I nope. would like to have eyes. <laughs> it's a good it's a good moment for it. So um, with ox points, as a quick reminder, this is going to give you an automatic success. You can spend ox points after you have made a die roll. So if you see that you have not succeeded, or perhaps you did succeed and you wa don't want to have to push for that extra success, ox points will help you out. Um, so keep that in mind. But I would also say that just as a, a further reminder, that after I have told you the outcome of the roll, if we have passed that threshold, you cannot spend any more ox points. So if we get to that point where you realize you could have spent one, we're past the point of no return. All right, let me pop this open real quick. That was the one thing I didn't have on standby. Maybe I was just silently hoping none of you were going to spend any ox points. Hoping that you would navigate these dangerous waters by yourselves. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight ox points. And thank you, as always, so much to our ox crew for supporting the stream punks month after month. We deeply appreciate you. Um, this ox point comes to you live from Leo Ambermain. All right. So you have an auto success on this. Who all is rolling observation here? Uh, it's just right now. Isaac. It's just Isaac. Okay. Who's looking for the hard line. Cause Isaac is trying to find a way to route power into the main security systems and found that there was a way to probably do that through this room. Cool. So that'll be a total of four successes. Four successes. I'm afraid that doesn't do it. Oh, well, there's my one April case. fool's joke. Yeah. All right. <laughs> oh. All right, four successes. Go, of course, Isaac. means that not only do you dominate that role, but that you get to stunt the hell out of this. What so do this your is... Isaac eyes see? So, observation check. Because this doesn't fall into, well, actually, some of these actually might be answerable. Uh, is it coming for me? Are they cl more than close by? Those are certainly questions that you could have answered. But if you can think of anything outside that realm of those questions, I'm open to those possibilities. So, you will find the hard line, you're going to spot it. What else would okay. you like to know with those stunts? Um, let me see. Uh, trying to really, really quickly pull up all the uh, stunts. Yeah, just as a quick reminder, because yeah, this okay. is a role for the hard line, you will not be able to spend these stunts to learn any information about the gunfire. This is. Um, then I don't think any of them. I because the hard line isn't coming for me. Are there more hard lines close by? How do so, I get in past or away from the hard lines? So this revisits the questions that Noir had because a lot of the times that Noir stunted this yeah. observation check, none of these would apply. So I just like Noir, I I basically told him if you have questions and it's outside the realm of what it suggests, pitch them and I can answer them. We could do I mean, a in get new information. Of, mm -hmm. Um that one's the contact one, I believe. No, I know um, we could ask for that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you could. Um, uh, in the course of looking for the hard line, I might at least also see the PD chip stuff. Uh, the uh, like whether there are other people because like I'm looking around the room, so it's not within mm -hmm. the scope of the gunfire over there, mm -hmm. but it's within the scope of things I'm seeing in the course of looking for the hard line. In the course of looking for the hard line, you spot it because you spot something that looks like it's part of the wall, an unusual piping or perhaps a power line that is actually jutting out of the wall. And as you approach it and shine your light over to it, it is in fact a human limb that is still attached to what looks like a open box where the hard line is located. 
it's hanging in a it's gripped onto the side white knuckled pale with a large spattering pool of blood on the ground answers the question is where that pdt chip is probably pinging from wow. as the forearm is typically where they are put if not the back of the neck um do i see any signs of metal corrosion no you don't it doesn't look like there is acid spray spatter doesn't appear to be any corrosive material that has been spattered across this place well someone won then um the count is still weirdly off that's one person's arm the pilot or the pirate, excuse me. Other chip, where are you? Um, let's see, I don't have anything in particular, Tig. Group, open up. I, I would say pitch the the new information. Like if there's, you find something new and unexpected information, see if he'll let that fly. Cause I don't have any specific questions. Sure. Yeah, I'll let that fly. As you move up to it, Isaac, the arm undoubtedly belongs to what looks like another black fatigued wearing individual, which you have to assume based off of what you've encountered so far is likely another pirate's arm. Okay. Um, so far, you have not come across any gore related to station staff. No, I have not. In fact, I don't think I've come across any station staff at all, other than those ones. Mm -hmm. You know, um, the murderer and the other ones. Um, okay. Uh, any blood trail relating to that? Yes. Yes, there is. You see, the, you see the spatter along the floor. Um, the spray up against the wall is also telling. And it starts to paint a picture that someone was standing here all right. And what happened to them is not entirely clear. It's difficult to sort of imagine what might have happened here. Isaac doing the best they can to try to paint that investigatory picture of past events. But all you see is carnage. Where is that other PDT chip? And where is the body this arm belongs to? Following as much of the spray as you can, Isaac, you do note that at least some of it seems to section off and move up against one of the back walls where it pools further. And as you move over to it, were you human and capable of suffering stress, you might flinch at the sight of someone who looks like they've been folded. In one of the upper corners, you can only imagine what transpired here with someone in a fit of desperation doing everything they could to get away. But from the state of the corpse that you see dangling rather well hidden off the side of the catwalk indicates that someone was trying to pull themselves up before the lower half of their body was separated. They've been what looks like lashed up against the side. In the darkness, they looked like heavy machinery equipment. But as you stand there looking down, you see whatever did this left the other half of them just laying there on the ground. There doesn't appear to be any other signs except for something with incredible force pulled this person apart. And they are also missing an arm. Where is this relative to the trunk line that I found? It's about 10 feet away. Tig, the trunk line is over there. Could you go and start checking it out, please? Yeah, I don't want sure. the organic near this. 
Tig, it's impossible to miss the arm that is hanging off the side of the power, the box where the trunk line is located. Approaching it, you're a combat medic, former colonial marine. You've seen shit like this. It wasn't it wasn't quite like this, but you've been in enough worlds where you have actually seen some of the local wildlife do shit like this. It wasn't always combat wounds. Sometimes, sometimes you found yourself landed in a place where everything was trying to kill you. So it's alarming. Uh, yeah, she's going to take a peek. Um, are, was this just torn off? Are there bite marks were they alive when it happened like trying to like what the can she glean from this arm the only way to tell is by squeezing your hand around the hand that is already clutching the thing and trying to gently remove the sleeve to find out yeah. exactly what the condition of the wound is yeah. um, you grab the cold soaked black fatigued sleeve and slowly with a slurping sound pull it right off of this severed arm that is hanging um as you do uh, it the, the first thing you notice, the white bone that is clearly visible, without giving any further description of this horrific scene, you devise that this arm has been torn from whatever body mm -hmm. it was attached to. It does not look like a clean cut. It looks like it was mm -hmm. broken and torn. Somebody was maybe mauled. It's hard to say, but it, it you don't think... You don't think it was an animal bite? It's hard to say. You can make a medicine check if you want to try to get a snapshot about this. It's not going to be easy, yes. though, yes, considering please. the state of the arm. So I'm actually going to put a minus one penalty on this. So one okay. die less. Not that that's going to put Tig back too much. <laughs> we'll find out. We'll find out. Okay. You got this, Tig. Let's see. One less, and then my stress die from last week. I just like rolling physical dice. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm here for the click clacks. <laughs> just oh, three. Like, yeah, yeah. Yes. Oh, three successes. Three, three yeah. successes. Again, you'll be able to ask some questions here if you yeah. want to, uh, since you're literally doing like a diagnostic check on this. Mm -hmm. Um, normally a medical aid stunt is just plus one health, but since you're kind of doing a forensic analysis <laughs> of what's going on, uh, yeah, you can ask questions. The answer to your okay. first question is this wasn't an animal bite. It's judging from the epidermal layer and the tearing that you're looking at. It looks like it was brutally torn free. <laughs> like, like if somebody had gotten their arm trapped and then was dragged violently in the opposite direction. But they were there. It's holding on to the door, like holding on to the door. Ooh, it's okay. literally holding on to the what looks like a junction box of some kind. Okay, that paints a fun picture. Yeah, but in retrospect, that's actually wild grip strength. That is wild grip strength. <laughs> they boulder, maybe. I don't know. <laughs> you are in a room full of machines. Maybe something was used. It's entirely possible. I mean, mm -hmm. you can't imagine anything short of a machine having the power to do something like this, mm -hmm. or maybe a synthetic. Uh, any, Sam, do you have any thoughts for questions? Um, let's see. What, what? Or team, the whole table, I suppose. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else? Which, we're going to have to jump back to see what's yes. going on in the other room after this. Uh, yeah, because y'all don't get uh, that particular flavor of, of stunt on medical aid roles. Mm -hmm. It's just, we could just kind of get to ask. It's a forensics check, so I'm letting you ask questions because of the stunts on the medical role. So. Blood pool. Viscosity. Age. Yeah, how long? Good question. Um, can't be more than a day. Ooh. It looks glossy, dark, but maybe a day. 24 hours. Okay. Is that my two questions then? Because I got... Uh, no, you got, you got one more. Oh, okay. Yeah. You asked what okay. age it was, and you got... Oh, because you got three successes. So those are your two questions. Yeah, those are my two questions, yeah. 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 That's correct. Yeah, those are your last questions. Okay. Um, the power line that Isaac has directed you to, it looks like it has been damaged, but it is not beyond repair. It looks like it was a quick damage, uh, but it does look like something has, has... It looks like it's been pulled from its casing. Only enough to what would appear to be shut the place down. 
It doesn't mm-hmm. look like it. It looks like it maybe was a rush job or it was a violent after effect of something else that was happening. But it looks like the casing, if you can't imagine something like a power box on the inside mm-hmm. of the switchboard, it looks like this particular front, the facing panel looks like it has been uh, torn rather clumsily and brutally free of its of its foundation. It could take Isaac a few minutes or so to fix, depending on what Isaac rolls. But this is absolutely something that Isaac could fix. Okay. Yeah, do I see? So they had asked me to check this area out. So um, I think naturally here, to report yeah. to report to Isaac what you saw is going to mm-hmm. inevitably lead you to seeing what Isaac is seeing. That, mm, I mean, how, unless, far, how far away was the rest of the 10 feet 10 from feet, you are about 10, 10 feet, feet away. Isaac is standing in the corner. I mean, to be fair, Tig is probably reporting as she's looking at it. Mm-hmm. So like if you come out of the direction of that, I am deliberately like, trying to not get you to see that body. So then <laughs> if you come to like the other side, when she goes to like make eye contact with you, she will not be looking in the direction of that body. And I leave it to player's it, choice. If, yeah, you, yeah, if Tig I'm, doesn't see it. Fine, not seeing see. it if that if that's Isaac's intent because Tig is kind of focused on this right now. That, that's the task she was given. So, if Isaac wants to move out of the way of that direction, that's fine with me. I will. Yeah, it's probably I mean, the best it thing is to certainly do. Their intent. It, um, it, it, they, it's well hidden when there's in shadows. They just can't accurately predict what's going to bother organics. Like <laughs> they would never have predicted that statues can do that. Come on, it's art. Well, it's Isaac, like, you also have you have experience that will tell you that seeing corpses, especially corpses in this state, is likely to cause some stress. Right. See that, which is why. Yeah. They're confident but, in their ability to predict this one, but it's sure. just err on the side of caution with with organics, you know. So moving away from the corpse is the ideal thing to do. The shadows were hiding it well yeah. enough, but the moment Tig turns to talk to you, that shoulder lamp is going to shine right on you and the corpse. It'll be impossible to miss. So Isaac, taking a few steps away, Tig does not see this thing dangling from the side. It is well jammed up into that catwalk, <laughs> and doesn't see the legs on the ground either, and instead focuses Ooh. on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she'll walk you through what she learned, and then okay. be like, I'm not, you know, I'm not a techie minded, but I feel like this doesn't look that bad. Not the arm, the behind it, the tech bits. Uh, yes, the tech bits aren't that bad. I will remove the arm fries. <laughs> um, it actually takes a bit. Yeah, the, the death grip on this thing, which. I'll give you this. As you try to remove the hand and feel the death grip, at first it might be safe to assume maybe Riga set in, and maybe that's why it's kind of hard to pull it off. But something tells you the death grip may have been a result of somebody holding on very tightly, which starts to paint a little bit more of a picture for you, Tig, because not only has that facing of the power system have been uprooted and torn brutally, but you start to realize, and you as well, Isaac, that the hinging door that opens into that panel has actually been partially torn free from its metal housing, painting the picture that someone was holding on to this before they were torn away from it. Isaac, without making a machinery check, just taking a look at this, you can absolutely repair this. It looks like it was a, it, it doesn't look like it was a surgical removal or, or shutdown. In fact, it looks like it was just maybe it was collateral damage, but it looks like it was pretty, pretty clumsy and easy to repair in the state that it's in. Understood. How long would it take? Let's roll to find out. Heavy machinery check. Unless you're honestly asking me because of the plans, you are, you are, if w- without, without a number of successes to do like a quick Isaac job on this thing, which you are known for like splitting the time in half, maybe a 45 minutes to get this repaired and working again. That is so much longer than I'm willing to dedicate to this with blood curdling screams in the facility. <laughs> Truthfully. Take, I can repair this, but it's going to take a little time. And we just heard over comms that the hostage takers are offering an hour. Mm-hmm. And by those gunshots, not even that. Okay. We could absolutely see what's going on with cameras. 
I'm more inclined to apply a personal touch at this point. This is getting bad. If you're up for it, yeah, let's do it. What are you thinking? Quite questions mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. as y'all are doing this. Mm -hmm. um, just keep in mind, you all have comms to each other. Mm -hmm. So just as a quick reminder. Yes. Yes. Are you thinking you want to take a walk or? I think there's no way this happened and no one else knows about it. This doesn't happen quietly. Which of them knew about it? Hmm. When If I do a quick shoulder lamp scan, like on the walls and like uh, vertical surfaces in here, am I seeing any gunfire, ev evidence of gunfire? Like uh, just in this area? Not on the walls, but you would see that a couple of the machines in here near where you found the guy leaning up against the other mm -hmm. machine, there appear to be bullet holes riddled in the wall, uh, the machinery rather, uh, across the way from him. So definitely not quiet. Nakamura knew. knew. I bet he knew. I could repair the security cameras, but it would take me no more than, or no less than 20 minutes. Is that time worth burning, Captain, Dr. Captain? I think right now information is at a premium. If you are in a safe and secure location to get that done, then please do so. Also, how are you doing, Isaac? You okay? Well, I'll have to fix that later. Let's spend those 20 minutes getting the camera up. Okay. Okay. Well, I will make the heavy machinery check then. Time to work fast, Isaac. Yep. Make that heavy machinery check. This is what you're going to be doing for the next half of the shift. Yep. Isaac wants eyes. So Tig's gonna take a little bit of a walk, not not completely out of the room, but just I'm not. So I'm not gonna leave there. I just want to see where the next entrance is. Can I see through while they do that? They they want to keep working. Okay, <laughs> Isaac, what did you roll? I got enough successes to have the time, so it it will be the like twenty two and a half minutes at least. Okay, so you stunt it by splitting 35. the time in half. Okay, so yep. you're working quickly. You, how many stunts can you can you stack the same stunt? Can um, you yeah. like five? Not, I would have had to get more. Um, oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Then I did. I got yeah, no, I, I I won't let you have 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 the usual time. <laughs> <laughs> be cool, um, though. <laughs> yeah, um, but uh, Isaac skillfully and quickly starts going to work with the focus and speed and competency that perhaps is only seen in a synthetic that has this kind of expertise with heavy machinery. Hands moving much like Commander Data's across the screen, just Isaac's just quickly moving it about, utterly focused on what they're doing, fully aware that the clock is ticking for these poor hostages. Tig, you start inching up on the doorway. It is closed. All the doors mm -hmm. to this place are, slid, are, are closed. However, none of them look like the doors you entered which if you remember, looked like they were kind of cobbled together and makeshift and were excessively loud. This loud, looks yeah. like a this looks like a station door. Probably okay. nowhere near as loud as the others. Motion detector. I was able to do it through the last door. There is any? motion on the other side of the store. Just north of the room, you detect immediately as you kind of hold up the motion detector, remembering that the motion detector is actually built into the back mm -hmm. half of your gun. You raise the mm -hmm. pulse rifle and look down at it. And sure enough, you hear the soft just at that volume level where it attracts your attention, but doesn't give away your position to anybody who might be stalking you. In this mm -hmm. case, it looks like just north of here is cargo elevators and service lift elevators to what you have to presume would be a second floor, or perhaps it goes down below because you do know this place is built off the side of the cliff, but there's nothing in the blueprints that actually reveals where those elevators go. 
Aside from that, there's vending machines in area, and it looks like the medical facility is also just on the other side of the door that you're looking at. Mm -hmm. So if you can imagine looking at that map, you are in the upper right corner of that room, just north of where it says distribution and storage area. Yeah. And that door is, is, that, is currently it, sealed. This is the only... Oh, there's another door too. Um, mm -hmm. That goes... Uh, it's in the that's in the lower the south. southeast quadrant of the room. Yeah. That apparently while leads Isaac, into a corridor. Yeah, while Isaac works, she's just, just gonna peek just with the um motion detector also, just to like get a feel. Like just push the motion detector through it. Like we got 20 minutes while Isaac is working. I just want to get as much information as we can. The door <clears throat> slides open and you see him. Oh, I just, you. I didn't open the door. You didn't uh, okay. You said you now were taking can, a peek. I can uh, with the motion detector, but I can open the door. That's no, fine. No, the <laughs> motion detector gave you the information. I said you detected movement. You said you were going to take a peek, so I thought you were opening oh, the door. I said to the, the other door. The other door down the side. There's nothing, there's no motion. Okay, really that's all I wanted. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay, so, so I don't open, I don't open the door. I was just going to look the through the motion detector. <laughs> that means I'm changing everything that just happened. Okay. Oh, I'm so yeah. sorry. <laughs> yeah. When you say take a peek, that's what I think you're Sorry. doing. So no, that's with, okay. With that's just why that, I made that mistake sense. because that's I thought it. you were peeking. Um, in which case, uh, back in the main corridor where you guys are, um, what are you all doing while this is taking place? Because it it is just you all sitting there, staying kind of like listening to some of the radio chatter when it does come in. Uh, so did we all hear the... Yes, everybody uh, heard the gunfire, the screaming, the repeated gunfire. All of you all heard that. Yeah. Um, Kelly, is there any way that I can get a visual on our pirate friends? Uh, is there a door with a window? Just something. I just I need to see what's going on. Uh, there's a few doors in the facility that have view windows. Yes, but uh, I couldn't tell you which ones to look through. I don't. I don't know. <clears throat> Nakamura, would you be so kind as to escort me to one of uh, to 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 a place where I might be able to get visuals on uh, our friends here? And Martha, if you could attend to that uh, data pad that you found. <clears throat> oh, I'm on it, Doc. Thank you very much, Nakamura. Nakamura if you please. Nakamura hesitates for a moment and says, "You wouldn't prefer to have the Marine by your side for this?" Nah. I need a tool. You get a scalpel. Very well. Um. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna go with Nakamura and kind of okay. give Martha the old wink, wink. <laughs> okay. So that means you're actually moving into the room that I thought Tig has just been peeking into, because mm -hmm. Nakamura is going to be leading you into the public lift access area. So as he approaches that, it does have what looks like a slim looking window that peers into the place. Unfortunately, with so much darkness permeating through this entire room, it's very difficult to see what's going on inside. Nakamura does take a quick peek and then look back at you and just shake his head, indicating he can't see inside and says, do you wish to go in? No, but I'm afraid I'm going to have to. We got to figure out what's going on here. He looks hesitant and glances back over down the corridor to where Martha is currently squatting down next to the body and tapping on the data pad. He looks back at you and says, I am not prepared for a breaching action. If we encounter the pirates, we will be outgunned. You're not going to let a weaponless doctor be braver than you today, are you, son? Yes. If I must. My... Whoa. Priorities are the people here and the facility. You are not a Wayland Yutani employee. I have no obligations to you beyond your helping me save the people of this facility as well as the materials here. I figured you might say that, so I ran the calculus ahead of time for you. You need me to save your people. I'm going through that door. I'm not being in danger. If you want to abandon your objective of protecting this place, feel free, but I'm going. And glances back at the door again and says, 
I will do what I can for you, but nothing more. I wouldn't expect anything else. Like I said, scalpel. And I'm going to go to the two. He grabs your shoulder, tight grip on your shoulder, and says, I go first, then. Understood. He steps in front of you, and he once again pulls out that interesting-looking handgun that he has. Taps the button. <laughs> the door slides open. And he takes one silent step into the room and squats down and takes a few more. He moves very quietly, you notice, as he edges himself up to the corner. To your left is what looks like Nakamoto's office. You can see the word security written across it. It has been opened, and judging from the state of it, just from looking inside, it has been ransacked. It looks like there's papers, data pads, an overturned chair, and you're pretty sure you see bullet holes all over the walls. Um, there also looks like there was some kind of locker unit mounted up onto the wall near what looks like another door, which you think is perhaps a cell. The locker unit, judging from the mounts inside, probably once held weapons that are not there. So either the security has them or it's been raided. But the rest of this place is completely shrouded in darkness. And Nakamura is taking his time as he takes one foot after the other before moving up to the corner of this wall. You see what looks like a sleek metal wall that has what looks like some kind of caution paints like tape around the sides of it, indicating that he is standing near what would be a service lift on the other side. And a couple of very charmingly corporate sterile signs pointing people to which direction leads where. And he stops for a moment and listens before looking back at you and telling you to quietly motioning you in. All right. I will endeavor to try. <laughs> I will go okay. You move into the room. Um, go ahead and make me a mobility check, if you would, please. Okay. Be prepared to be disappointed, Nakamura. <laughs> Good news is, is you get a plus one to the die roll because it is dark in here. Oh, yay. All right. That is one success. Okay. Properly motivated, Doc especially because you dropped the X word, you remain quiet, stepping into this room, fearing what might be lurking within this station. And the panicked gunfire you heard before suggests, well, let's not dwell on what it might suggest. But as you edge up behind Nakamura, he seems satisfied with the sound you don't create <laughs> before he moves out into the hallway. As he moves out into the hallway, both you and Nakamura at the same moment spot what looks like a flashlight movement of a flashlight uh, across the wall and the surface of the floor. Nakamura immediately stiffens and pushes himself back up against the wall, but it takes you both a few seconds to realize that's the wrong place to be. Someone's coming around the corner. He points at the security office. I will follow his instruction. Okay. Uh, you should, do I need to make another sneak? Uh, nope. Nope. Okay. I'm going to err on the side that the alien RPG, like most free league RPGs, tell you do not roll too often. <laughs> so we're going to say that for this scene, you've got a success on your mobility stealth checks. So you quickly laying low. Your adrenaline starting to pump, Doc. You manage to push yourself into the security office where you find the corpse of a security officer laying on the floor. Most of his head has been removed, which what you have to be assumed is from a close range shotgun blast from the looks of it. Gain a point of stress. Unless you have a talent that makes you immune to such a thing, but the moment you see... Oh, no, I do not. Okay. Um, uh, Tig, I, I think you have something that prohibits you from gaining stress for seeing something like that. Isn't that right? No, I should. That would be smart of me. But no, uh, she has the <laughs> <laughs> the like the whatever the her level headed thing is where right. she, she ignores Nerves two of steel. points of stress when she okay. rolls. Nerves of steel. Yeah, yeah, that's in which case you're going to get a point of stress for encountering the severed arm. 
So make sure to mark okay. that down. Cool. Um, Nakamura comes in just a few moments later and lays still for a second. And Nakamura's breath catches as the light pauses. It's shining just over the top of this counter space where you see the deactivated retro styled computers of Weyland Yutani that are currently running in standby mode. Mother has them all offline. They're just no power. You have your good friend Isaac working on that in the next room. Right now, however, there is a beam of ghostly flashlight that is shining above your heads and lighting up that empty locker behind you. Someone is moving across the floor, and judging from the sound of their movement, they might be dragging one of their feet. Nakamura just looks at you, and you can see the jaw clench as he readies his gun. And slowly you hear something sliding across the floor, a slight squeak to it. Maybe it's exposed flesh or maybe it's rubber. You can't tell. The flashlight beam gets more and more powerful and more and more defined into a circle above you as the person nears. And then the telltale sign, the sound of what would you can imagine being somebody clicking back an assault rifle's hammer here being readied and then a voice is anyone there who is there anyone <gasps> you hear a gasp sudden and the flashlight just swerves off of the wall And again, you hear, <laughs> you see what looks like that beam of light, judging from the ambient glow above your head, Albright, you're not sure what's happening, but you imagine that light is being shown across other areas of the room. Do I hear this from the door? Mm -mm. Too far? Okay. Yeah. On the other side of the door is no sound. I've, I've got a You really... see the movement. I got a really silly question. Ask you a silly question. So I can hear this individual's gait, which is that of somebody with a leg that is being dragged. Hmm. And I'm hearing this person in a moment of tension. Doc, in a moment of panic, goes to the thing that he knows, which is medicine. Mm -hmm. can, I he can I, with what I have heard, tell anything about this individual like do am yes. i hearing the shift okay because uh, you the, because you were wise enough to make that connection as the player of the doctor and you I, I can tell you noir as a player are suspicious because you are sensing what would appear to be desperation the answer is mm -hmm. yes doc is feeling like you're not encountering a hunter you're encountering somebody who might be on the verge of panic especially as you're seeing the ambient switching of that light going across the walls. It's almost as if somebody is wheeling and spinning around looking for something and you can hear the gasp. <laughs> I am I'm gonna, I'm about to do something powerful, stupid right now. And I'm going to give Nakamura a look like. Don't. Nakamura's jaw clenches as he stares at you. And you see him slowly shake his head. Scalpel. You are the scalpel. I'm the surgeon. And I would like to use calming presence to go, relax, son. We're here to help. Calming presence says... When you say I that, I need mm -hmm. to know what else you're doing. I am pulling out... I am pulling out my med kit. I'm imagining that the med kit has a very stay hidden, I'm, stay hidden first. I'm <laughs> asking specifically if you show any parts of your body while you say this. No, I'm, if the I'm answer just, is yes, I'm going to give you a plus one bonus to the roll. Uh, I, no, he he would lift up the med kit first. Okay. I think I think. Then I from I'll what I'm you, aware. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I was just going to say I will give you a plus one bonus to the roll. 
But as the GM, I'm also going to inform you that I have both hinted that this person is armed and panicked. So, mm -hmm. Noir, Albright needs to make this roll. Um, so one sec, one sec here. Uh, just, just making sure I'm doing this right. Um, okay, yeah. Uh, I'm, okay, cool. Uh, what roll am I making? So this is going to be a manipulation check. Oh, okay. So oh, that's perfect. Presence. Yeah, and that's kind of what you're good at. <laughs> yep. Okay. All right. We're 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 in it now. We're in it now. <laughs> Here, please do not announce the results of the roll, such so that we have the opportunity to spend Knox point after he's rolled, if needed. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, um. Should I do the ox point first? Because I just set up the dice pool. I haven't rolled yet. You can do it afterwards Eric if you want. Said you can roll first, but you can't have heard the results of the roll. Gotcha. Okay. Cool. Um, uh, I'm going to also go ahead and inform you that this is going to be a contested roll, so you're going to have to score more than him. Oh, then I was definitely using the ox point. point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Not a bad idea. Okay. So here we go. Oh boy, 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 and I get that one thing. Okay, that's I'll take that. That is a total of four successes. Here we go, including including the ox point, including the ox point. Okay. Noir, I rolled three successes. Ooh, thank you, ox point. I'll I'm gonna screenshot it, but I rolled three successes. Oh, on that roll. oh my god, oh, he's killing it with these rolls. Oh my god! Mm -mm -mm. I I was holding my breath on that one. Um, okay, it's screenshot. Um, yeah. As you say that, the light <laughs> whips around and points at you. And as you slowly rise up, no gunfire follows, and instead, you see a trembling tactical light attached to what you think is an assault rifle of some kind it is being held by a very large man who is wearing black black fatigues wouldn't, um, you, wouldn't shoot the guy with glasses now would you who are you I'm a doctor and from the sounds of your leg you could use one is there anyone else here with you Yes, there is. He is a very dangerous man, but I assure you that he means you no harm so long as you do not mean me any harm. Please let me help you. I, the sound of you walking is making my foot hurt. He keeps the rifle shouldered up against in a position that would be easy for him to open up with the gun if he needed to. He doesn't lower the point below the horizon of the desk. In other words, he's not pointing it at you. He's keeping it slanted down, which is usually that sign of don't make any moves. But instead, he glances to his left and right and then back at you. You're getting a little bit of a look now that that flashlight is not shining directly at you, Doc. What you see is what looks like a square-jawed individual with a nice handsome cleft chin, a shaved head, tattoos along the side of his face. He has skin that is he's fair skin, but it looks like it it looks like he has spent a little too much time not protecting it. You're guessing somebody who's probably spent a lot of time judging from his build and the way he's handling himself, probably former military, but the look in his eye doc without having to make any kind of insight checks here he definitely looks like he is on the verge of panic and despite this there's no tremble as he holds the gun but he doesn't lower it instead he waits a few moments and says tell your friend to come out and if i see a gun i'm going to kill everyone in this room well i'm sorry son if he comes out you're gonna see a gun now about let's talk about this and let's be reasonable now, first thing first, that that looks like it hurts. Let me shoot you up with something to make you see hard stars, horseshoes, clothes, and blue moons. All right? Make you're you feel not good. going to talk me down from this. But as he says that, Doc, you don't think you're that convinced. He doesn't sound like he wants a fight, but you can feel the edge in his voice. 
that's not what's causing the tension for you though doc because in the corner of your eye nakamura looks like he's setting up you can see him slowly edging out and he puts his hands up to the sides of the gun and he looks like he's edging a little closer to the doorway as the man continues to say the rounds in this gun will shoot through any desk you hide behind tell your friend to come out now both of y'all are being downright stubborn. We can help each other. We can shoot each other. Which one y'all want to do? Now, now, Nakamura, you knock it the fuck off. I see what you're doing there, and I don't appreciate it. You, son, you are hurting, and I am a doctor, and that is pissing me off. So I'm going to need both of y'all to stand the fuck down. And I would like to use a command. Um, <laughs> okay, go ahead. <laughs> Oh, that's on comms by the way so y'all are all hearing doc use his outside voice um go ahead and make your uh, roll I, 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 I would like to use a, 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 an ox a, point a, 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 please if that's one more with ox uh, uh so then a total of four a total of four okay uh, i'm putting both I'm putting men, in chat. both men turn and look at you as the the common sense and f the, you were so fucking fed up there's no deception in your voice you're it's literally trying to speak reason and it gets through to the guy with the assault rifle as you see his shoulder slump and he goes uh, he lowers I, it i, I think um, he might be down on the channel yeah yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah uh, internet just went out Okay. Oh, no. Yeah, I saw we lost Jake for a second and then he came back. Yep. But... Oh, yeah. Das can't switch. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. Oh, okay, I'll stop. We're back. I'll okay, cool. As I right. swear to you, even on April's <laughs> Fools, I would never cliffhanger any of you like that. That is some, <laughs> that is some bullshit. I would never do that to you. <sighs> uh, mm. Mm. Yes. All but... right. So we are back. Um, and if you're on YouTube or on Twitch, you might have to click refresh, but I think we're good to go. So mm -hmm. where we last left off is Doc just successfully spinning an ox point from Shock 22 <sighs> managed to succeed at using his don't fuck with me command. I'm trying to get everyone to settle down. So <laughs> the gentleman holding the assault rifle shoulder slumps and he looks like he is grateful to surrender. You see his shoulder slump and he goes, <sighs> and he lowers the gun down. Nakamura, to his credit, looks at you and just goes, and he lowers his gun. All right. Now, now that we have listened to reason, son, I'm going to immediately begin to administer A to you, but no, no, I need you to... No, not here. Not here. Do you have somewhere else to go? We cannot can stay tell, here. Can you tell me why not here? We need because information. She is still in this facility. We have to get away. Nakamura, get are you... Are, are you? Can you agree that we take this gentleman away from here? Nakamura slides his back up against the wall to a standing position and swings around and points the gun directly at the man and says... I can't let you advance until you drop your firearm. Please, son. We are not here to hurt you. I am here to help you. Put the gun down. I'll carry it. He reaches over and he takes the assault rifle and he holds it up. And he says, please, we cannot stay here. All right. Nakamura, he has conceded to your wishes. Can we now advance him to safety? Nakamura edges forward. And he says, put the gun on the ground. And the man slowly starts to put the gun on the ground and Nakamura moves into a killing position and holds his fire and he holds him there. The man places the assault rifle on the ground and Nakamura says, slide it to me. No sudden moves. Nakamura slides the assault rifle over. And Nakamura doesn't pull the gun off of him. He stands there pointing it at him. And for a second, Doc, you are pretty sure that Nakamura is going to end this man. There's a tense moment where Nakamura just keeps the gun trained on him. And you can see it. You can see the gears turning for a moment. But I, before I, you can say anything, mm -hmm. Nakamura pulls the gun away and says, stand up. All right, let's see. Here we go. Let's... Rises. And he says, puts the man in front of him. 
and says, go. All right. Now, let's walk and talk. Walk and talk. What are we running from? Why are we running from her? The door opens. <laughs> Martha, you hear the door open. All of you can hear Doc's side of the conversation on comms. So you just heard Doc talk somebody down. So as the door opens, Martha, you're going to go ahead and real quick, as this is happening, go ahead and roll that contact check for me. Because this oh, will have been happening while all of this was taking place. And Tig, just so you know, you see the movement vanishing from your motion detector as they move back into the other room. And that was the, there's no other, like that was the movement. Not in the room, room that they were just in. No, nobody okay, cool. seems to be following them, at least oh, not okay. at the moment. Okay, at least cool. no one that's showing up in the down. motion detector. It Fair. is medium range after all. Yes. So. Okay. Uh, sorry, I'm doing my first Demi plane. <laughs> oh, whoa. I love that damn character sheet. Did you know you can change the background? You can have an animated yeah. mother background. It's so. Cool. Oh, I didn't know the other ones were animated. Mm -hmm. The mother one is. Did I roll? Oh, sweet. there. Yeah. Uh, three success. Three success. Three successes. Yeah. Let's go, um, yeah. This yeah. data pad looks like it actually might have deflected a bullet, and you can tell that there is what would appear to be some damage to the unit itself. It looks like it might be old, but you think you can retrieve a partial memory from the data pad itself. Yeah, but you would probably like have to use mother to see what's on it. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. Putting a pin in that then. Um, although, uh, can I save my stunts for later when I connect it to Martha or? Uh, yes, because you can okay. you can basically make it easier to do again. So uh, you, you can use that for when you Great. use that on mother, yeah. I believe oh, Martha right. also has an existing plus one for interfacing with this mother system based on some checks <laughs> because you guys hacked the shit out of her oh, <laughs> when you first oh, arrived okay. Okay. so you rolled like the goddesses maybe. yes you basically mm -hmm. outrolled a mother 6500 unit or no i think it's a 7000 uh, 7, which 7000 <laughs> units so 7, well done um all right so you see you see first of all you see what looks like somebody who's not a part of your crew and who is dragging what appears to be a wounded leg that has been poorly bandaged um Martha, as he is moving through the doorway, you can just tell by both the way he is tatted, the way he is moving, this guy is either former UPP or he's UPP, but he's not dressed like one. He is a soldier of some kind. As he's stepping into the room and he spots you, and he just kind of makes a sound of indignation or exhaust, you're not sure if it's because he's just exhausted or if he spotted a colonial marine, but um, he has his hands up and Nakamura and the dock follow after him as the doors close. Shh, closes. Nakamura says, against the wall. Sit in that chair there. And the man does as he's told. He sits down and he says, don't let your hands down until I tell you. Can I immediately start medical aid on this guy? Yep. You move up to his leg. Mm -hmm. um, you move up to his leg. He doesn't resist. He sees what you're doing. And he says, who are you? You're not Waylon Yutani? Not important right now, son. Tell me what's going on in the other room. What was that shooting? Why are you running from that lady? She's gone mad. She's changed. She's doing terrible things to her own crew. Um, you pull the bandage off. You can see that he did the best he could with what he had. It looks like a combat dressing from what you can tell, but it's a bullet wound, looks like. He's taking a shot to the thigh, and he's lucky that it hit the meaty part. Just judging from the looks of it, Doc, he's not in danger of bleeding out quite as fast as he could be. But it does look quite painful. This is going to hurt for some time, but you can, you can give this a dressing here. You can certainly take the pain away. All right. Um, I, I do have painkillers in my med kit. Okay. Um, uh, should I roll for this? See how uh, one sec. I have to actually pull up the critical <laughs> hit table so that I know exactly what you're dealing with. Um, critical injuries. So as, <laughs> as you pull that combat dressing free, he, you, you can immediately hear him just go, oh, shit, as you pull it off. Um, the blood begins to flow a little bit. Uh, go ahead then and make your medicine check. And you can right. use your, of course, you can use your equipment here. Yep, I got my medical kit, which this. has another plus two. All right, here we go. God damn, I'm good. Four. <laughs> this is literally what yeah, you are. do. 
Yeah. <laughs> this See, is every time doing. you're like, I want to keep Martha's character sheet forever. Remember these roles. <laughs> remember these Yeah. Ones. Remember these. Um, also, I would appreciate it if that would please link me to the correct set of game rules and not. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah. Denied. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Dimmy Plane is not available, Dave. Um, okay. So I'm sorry. You said four successes? Yep. Okay. And again, I'm putting my rules in the uh, 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 Stream Punks uh, Beacon channel so y'all can see them too, folks. Yay. Oh, thank you for that. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I mean, essentially, he he has uh, he essentially has the disabled condition right now because he's mm -hmm. unable to he has he doesn't have an assistive device or anything. He's unable to actually use this part of his body at the moment. So, as you are treating him, you feel like he's probably going to have to just tough this out and uh, just don't put too much weight on it. But the blood loss is easy enough for you to stop. It looks like he actually did a somewhat decent job with what he had at hand. The painkillers are certainly going to help in this situation, but getting that tourniquet on there tight, you managed to secure him, and it looks like he is going to recover from this. Um, as you stimmy the critical injury, um, he's going to need surgery. But for now, he's he can probably move at about half the speed that you're moving at right now, unless he wants to cause further injury. All right, son, I got you all patched up best I could. Can I get your name? I'm Doc. <laughs> he smiles at you, almost like he's caught on to your game. It's not it's not cynical, Doc. You get the impression that he is fully aware of the uh, of the dance that you you two are doing right now. And he just he nods and says, <laughs> "Why do you need my name?" Cuz I know all my I know the names of all my patients. Uh, uh, my nickname is Seeks. Not a bad nickname. Next time, don't let a bully seek you, though, huh? It wasn't his fault. He was <laughs> frightened like the rest of us. I, can we talk him down? If the, if the rest of your people are being mistreated, then that means that the numbers ain't on her side. And the I The rest of my people are dead. I was the last one to get away from her. She's betrayed all of us. The others. I'm guessing they're not coming back either. You came here on the ship, no? Well, I didn't walk here. <laughs> you are not from Weyland Yutani. Never was corporate. Huh? Fuckers took their ship and ran. I'm gonna I'm gonna list some symptoms. And if this sounds familiar, if you've seen it in your former compatriot, please just give me a yes or a no. Have you noticed any contusions in the chest area? No. Have you come across any viscous liquid that has acidic properties? What do you mean? Have you come across asses, son? Have you seen any? No, nothing. No. Any life forms that you are unfamiliar with? No. What kind of questions are these? The kind of questions that let me know just how in danger we might truly be. We're going to die if we stay here. I'm inclined to believe you. We should go. Do with me whatever you wish, but do not leave me here. I at that point, up. Kelly approaches it at that point and says, He's one of them. His name is Seek, son. And Seekson? What kind of no, joke his, is that? Uh, what his are name you? is are Seek. You from, I'm, I'm, he's from Seekson? No, is that a company? No, I'm saying yes, it's, it's a name. company. It's a rival company. You oh, son of a bitch! I thought you were a pirate. 
You're, this is corporate espionage. You're taking people. I will see to it that your company is prosecuted to the full extent of the law. Well, if they sue them, they're not suing you. So good news for you, see? Well, I'm trying to tell you, Ke Kelly. First off, he has surrendered. Second off, good news. Whereas you thought you had a number of problems, it sounds like your number one problem has made it so you only have one problem. And what? this young, I'm saying that your, your, your man here, Nakamura, isn't as outnumbered as he thought he was because our pirate friend has killed her crew. Now, I don't know the state of your people. Seek, can you tell me uh, the people that worked here, lived here? Seeks is an X. Say it with an S if you must. Oh, Seeks. Seeks. Sorry, no disrespect. It's the accent. What do you want to know? What I want to know, well, I'll tell you what I want to know. I want to know how you expect to survive this because the moment you're taken into custody, you are a dead man. Waylon Yutani attacking one of our facilities. At that point, Nakamoto turns around and says, Manager Kelly, sir, forgive me. Please be quiet. Sure, yes, no, of course. Do, do your job. Continue. As I was saying, she has lost her mind and my crew are dead. I have to pause here because too much time has passed and I need to know what's going on with Tig and I need to know what's going on with Isaac in the other room. Take it. Yeah, Tig's getting antsy and waiting for Isaac. <laughs> Hasn't been 20 Isaac's minutes yet. Been, Isaac's still working. Uh, antsy for 20 minutes. So, okay. yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you're just covering, basically? That's yeah, fine. By that door. Nothing else is by, happening. Yeah, okay. by that door with, an, with a motion detector. No motion. Listening on the comms Nothing. and waiting for Isaac. You know, you Let's don't need it. to stay here and protect me, right? Yeah, but the thing is, uh, if I leave, it's not going to be in a direction you're happy with. So, this is for both of us. You could do not that. You could go and protect Doc. Doc has a Marine and a security man who maybe has some I questions. I think cancel each other out. That's fair. Well, I do want to be here in case something happens. You're messy and you live for drama. You're not going to find uh. it here. Take hunk hunkers in and continues to listen to the <laughs> soap opera in her on her comms and, and we could watches. give up. We could stop. We could just not do the cameras. We could defy authority. That's true. That's up to you, though. Question from a four stands. Do you want to take a walk? Isaac. Mm -hmm. Does Tig see you pause as you consider? I Did they say it out loud? This is Isaac is saying all of this. Yeah, no. yes. I, yeah, I so, just said yeah. that and Tig so said all that. Yeah. So what I'm yeah. asking is, is what is what is Tig see when when she flat out asks you, do you want to take a walk? I've wanted to take a walk for how many minutes has it been, Eric? <laughs> uh probably coming up on 10. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I've wanted to take a walk for eleven minutes. Well, we have new information. Doc asked for this did and then he went and put himself in a very dangerous uh situation found himself some information mm -hmm. lucky they they keep working they're they're you know in the but it's not until maybe adolescence you at you start getting a little more of the <laughs> notion that oh i can say no to stuff. Uh, Isaac's still that sort of compliant. So they're they're sulky, but they're doing what they were told to do. Can, okay. <laughs> Can we one on one line on our comms? Can I comm doc directly? Uh, I don't think you have it set up that way. Okay, that's fine. You you technically could, you just wouldn't be secured. That's fine. <laughs> okay. Uh, Tig's gonna come down. Above table, they are gonna keep doing it. Like yeah. they're they're gonna keep doing the thing either way. 
Okay. Just yeah, yeah, that's fine. Um, when there's a break in the conversation, when Tig doesn't mm -hmm. hear Doc talking anymore, she's gonna come Doc directly and be like, "Hey, temperature check on uh, encouraging Isaac to disobey orders. How do we feel about that?" I kind of feel like this is like right after he got done yelling at everybody. Yeah. <laughs> Put the goddamn guns down, huh? What? Uh, what? What you just asked me, Tig? <laughs> Temperature check on, on encouraging, you know, independent thinking and by proxy disobeying orders. For Isaac, how do you feel about that? Maybe a later, I, maybe a later project? I endorse anything that will help Isaac express their individualism. Take like looks off into the corner and goes, I'll keep you posted and ends the call and ends the call. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Immediately the doc that? goes back to yelling. <laughs> Okay. So what do you do? Oh, Isaac just asked, why are you tempting me, Tig? I'm g giving you options. I have options. Yeah. I you are underwent a whole additional procedure to have mm -hmm. options. Yeah. We almost got arrested by the Colonial Marines because I have options. It's so funny, actually, in hindsight. have been shut down like they actually stopped turning around <laughs> i would have been shut down oh no not that part i just mean like of all the things that we've done that like that's a thing that technically should have been a really big deal but seems like such a footnote of like a thing that we could have gotten in trouble for of like all of the things that we've done big to me it is big to you it is big to you that's not i don't mean to it's like like fully like puts the gun down from her like overwatch and we're just like, okay that's not what i meant isaac i just meant that like that that, that also happened amidst all of the he knows and having to do like espionage and stuff that like the fact that that also happened feels like it was so long ago and it really hasn't been that long that that's like also a thing that we did anyways i'm i'm talking myself in a quarter point being you have options if you would if you choose if the, your choices of all of your options that you would like to keep doing working on your camera thing there are other choices that you don't have to make if this is the one that you want to make but you can still, I'm not very good at pep talks. Um, That's true. Yeah. But the whole point of having options is so the choice matters. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can be violent and I choose not to be violent, then that's making a choice mm -hmm. about who I am rather than just never having the option at all. Exactly. So if I choose to do what Doc tells me, mm -hmm. you know, then I'm good and stuff. Isaac, I think you're good either way. I'm just making sure that you are choosing that and not obligated or disregarding your choice. Aren't obligations things humans take on themselves? Mm. I guess it depends on the situation. I'm technically obligated to the Colonial Marines. I technically put myself in that situation. But they have more sway over me in the choices I make than... I am always, you know, comfortable with. Even though I'm not really there anymore, I kind of bypassed a chance to get out for good. So, that was a choice, I guess. Oh, boy. What was that? Anyway. Oh, boy. It's not a thing that I have thought about much since uh, I chose it. Um, Doesn't seem that long ago, after all. Yeah. Anyways, I'm not the most eloquent, just want to make sure you had the choice is all that it was Isaac's choice thanks got your back but this is sparking now so it probably won't be too long cool take us back to keep a watch
hardware mute, I think. I am hardware muted. Sorry. I was saying, let's go ahead and take our 10 minute break. Um, we'll go ahead and, and pause there. We'll come back in 10 minutes and see how the rest of this unfolds. Don't go anywhere. We'll see you in 10 minutes. Whoa. Welcome back to Beacon. We're going to go ahead and jump right back into this game session that has taken a pretty tense turn. Um, you have here this gentleman who is currently seated with his hands up and a gun pointed at him. Though I will say the Nakamura is not aiming it directly at the man's head. It looks like he's just got it trained on him in case the man makes any sudden moves. Doc is currently patching him up. And in the other room, Tig and Isaac have been having some meaningful conversations about uh, the merits and flaws of actually following and not following orders. In this case, we're going to go ahead and say that uh, the clock ticks on. You have a few more minutes of scene time while Isaac is working on that power line. So in the other room with this man who names, who's called himself Seeks, what would you like to ask him if you would like to do anything? Otherwise, Nakamura just stands there with his gun trained on him. He was answering that he's referring to somebody who has apparently become irrational and deadly and dangerous and has killed all of his crew members. What would you like to do? Uh, I'd like to ask him a few more questions. Uh, son, can you tell us about your captain, or uh, about the individual that has gone mad. Uh, how long have you known them? How long have they started acting irrationally like this? Something interesting happens in that moment. He glances up and stares at Nakamura. Nakamura stares back at him. And this long moment passes between the two of them before he finally says, they don't know, do they? Nakamura uh, doesn't reply. He stares at the man and he says, I've known my captain for some time. And she has always been a bit loose, a bit wily. Uh, some would use the rather inaccurate pejorative of calling her crazy, but I know better. She is someone who truly enjoys her work and does not subscribe to such unfortunate labels. No, instead, she has changed lately and has become more and more violent and unstable, impatient. And now all my crew members who sided with me are dead. sided with you against your captain? Yes. She is the only one who truly knows why we are here, though I suspect another one of you. Martha! If you would like to attempt to beat Nakamura on an initiative check. Oh, God. And Doc, if you would like to attempt to beat Nakamura on an initiative check, I'll allow that. Okay. Yeah, for sure. <clears throat> um, I don't know how to do that on this. I'll just do it. <laughs> so yeah. initiative the is uh, there's no oh. initiative. There's so because um, the VTT for Debbie Plain does not have access to initiative drawn cards, unfortunately. So okay. what we cool. do is we resort to dice rolls. In this right. case, okay. um, in this case, uh, I would say uh, D six. Yeah, essentially. Yeah, or essentially a D six. Um, sometimes we use a D ten because it's a little easier to do it that way. But um, D six, I think, in this case, is totally fine. Okay. If y'all want to go ahead and make uh, just a D six roll, I get two initiatives because I'm you need to pick the best one of the two. All right, yeah. cool. You want low, right, for alien? You want low. Oh, low nice. Is better. I rolled a six and a one. 
Okay. Let's go, Martha. Martha. <laughs> I also rolled one. Yes. Look at Perhaps it's because crude. the two of you were anticipating more sudden moves by Nakamura. Mm -hmm. But you see it coming. The twitch in his arm and the sudden jerk in his hand as he raises this gun to the head of the individual sitting in the chair. He is going to blow this man's brains out. You have an action. What would you like to do? You're going to beat him to it. What would I you like to do? I want to tackle him. All right. We're in combat. You get to go first. You're, You're going to try to tackle him. <laughs> All right. So lunging forward to try to stop him from this attack that is going to put you into hand-to-hand -hand combat with him so you are going to be making that check this yeah, is this a close combat check so you're going to be rolling your strength plus close combat and whatever talents and traits that you get okay give me a second um i don't think i have any close combat uh talents so okay then it's just the die roll and it is a <clears throat> contested check. You, could, you should take a dox point. I would like to take an ox point, please. Okay. You're spending another ox point. That is three you guys have spent, taking you down to five. This one is from Guru Matt. Thank you, Guru Matt. So you're going to get one auto success on this. Okay, let me... Oh, okay, got it. Still getting used to this. Mm -hmm. So close combat. I added those. And then strength. I add mm -hmm. those. Okay. Uh, yeah. Go ahead and make your roll. Oh no. <laughs> Zero. I'd like to push this <gasps> roll. Yes. Uh, you did have the ox point, so you technically got one. You can yeah, push but the roll if you'd like. Yeah. It's contested, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. It is contested. So I'll I'll still push. Okay. Do you add you a roll. stress before? Add or a point after of stress. Roll? No, you add before. a you immediately add a point of stress. Okay. So you okay. gotta get an extra die for this. And it has to be rolled, rolled with it. Yeah. Okay, got it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, it said select. Sorry, I did this wrong. Select okay. dice to reroll. I, I guess all of them were selected because now I got one success. Um, so, yeah. So what you should do, it just says push push roll and it'll push it for you. You'll yep. see. Yeah. Okay. So you got one success then total. I got one. So, so two total. Actually, so two total successes. With uh, so you were going to lunge forward and you are with, yeah, you're going to beat him by once. So you actually are going to be able to stunt, which allows you to grapple him. Uh, can I specifically grab his gun? Uh, yes. Yeah. But you won't be able to disarm this turn. Yeah. I you can grab, you can grab the gun for sure. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I want to knock or him actually, over and then. Uh, it, does it allow you to disarm? Let's see. Opponent drops held weapon. Yes. You can do that instead of grapple. You oh, then yes, that. You can that. basically disarm him. <laughs> then I'll right. that. Yeah. Okay, Mark, can I suggest that you grapple? Why? Yeah. Well, yeah, that's a good so, idea. I just want him to not have the weapon. Clarify, in his hand or if me. you grapple, it's have not it. going to stop him from using the gun. Okay. Then yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Like, yeah. get it out of his you hand, and yeah. then yeah. we'll There's see. There's two yeah. of you at an initiative of one. Yeah. Uh, yep. Oh, hey, you could grab the gun. So, if you're going to knock uh, that, you grab the gun and it pops out of his hand. What are you going to okay. do, Doc? It's your action. Um, I want to pitch something. I've got my med kit. Yes, you do. I would like to. Yes, you look, do. I would like to give him a painkiller to put him to bed. I promise <laughs> somebody was getting. I promise somebody was getting lucky charms today. <laughs> okay, you're gonna try to dose him. Yep. So uh, there are rules for this. So what what are you using specifically? Oh man, um, it is called. It's not nap relief. I don't think it is. I think nap uh, relief is. Reduces just your. Thing. That's the other thing. Uh, it is. Hold on. I have it in my kit, so I don't remember. It's under the gear tab. I'm gonna go to the pharmacy. Mm -hmm. uh, there is the X drug so. Sweet Dreams. Sweet Dreams. Is, is what I would give them. Mm, sweet Dreams is derived from. Uh, it's made of the... is a pleasure. Thank you. Yeah. Nope. <laughs> nope. That would not be available to you. Sweet Dreams is only available in the Colonial Marines Guide, and it is a uh, hallucinogenic mushroom. Oh, damn. that is. Is yeah. it called? Is that the X drug? Um, no. X drug would X not drugs be good for that would make it stronger. Oh. Okay. <laughs> oh. So, is there something that's like a uh, sleep? Let's see. Sleep freezing. So, saying. Oh, uh, hold on. I'll spray uh, each dose. Okay, the really good nap things well, are probably on the ship. 
because yeah, that's uh, where the anesthesia for surgery would be. Yeah, yeah. Uh, honestly, yeah. That's gonna if you spend an ox point, I'll let you have this. I would like to have I would it. like to uh, spend an ox point, please. Okay. I tried this stunt once and it didn't work. I need it to work once. I got I need somebody to okay. do it. Okay. <laughs> um so this is from Duran452. Um basically I'm letting you have the item in question. It's like spending an ox mm-hmm. point to be like, oh look what I remember to bring. Yep. Now you've got to land the hit on him. Okay. He is not Uh-oh. grappled, just so you know. Mm-hmm. He, but he did lose the weapon. Yep. He is focused on Martha at the moment. Does Doc get a plus for his attention being drawn to Martha? No. Okay. No, he doesn't. Okay. Yeah. All right. So what am I? What am I? Really it's here. close combat. So strength plus close combat. Oh no. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, okay. So... Is, there, is there any argument for a medical check? <laughs> Uh, can I use another oh. ox point, please? Uh, no, you cannot. <laughs> oh, well. nope, you can only spend it once in your initiative. Yep. Uh, oh. Medicine? Is there an argument for a medicine check here? Um, there is not much of an argument here. This is combat. <laughs> all right, you know what? You, you, you miss all the shots you don't take. Um, you miss all the shots you don't take. You got this. You got this. So here we go. Strength, which is two. Mm-hmm. Uh, close combat, which is zero. Mm-hmm. Um, um, we'll work uh, on it. We gotta work on it. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, the doc is perfect. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, if you push, I swear to Peter. <laughs> I failed. <laughs> um, but I would like to push. I okay. swear to Peter. Don't you have you're a lot of push, push, push. Yes, he does. Uh, you're going to immediately gain a point of stress, which you will automatically add to your Yeah, that'll be five stress, which is one extra die to hopefully get me through this. I got to give you counseling next yeah. time I get a chance. <laughs> counseling? Yeah, I, I could use it. Here we go. This is it. This is for the money, y'all. Come on, come on, come on. One second. Mm. Okay. Buffering. Buffering. Uh, uh, I'd like you to check the uh, Stray Pugs Discord, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> nope, that's the wrong roll. Wrong roll, shit. Wait, what? what? That's not the What's right wrong? roll? What are you about at? Are you no, sure? It's the right roll. That's it the right roll. Yeah. Okay. Oh, no, no, no. That's what you got to do, baby. Good. That's good. Let's What's amazing go. is that's all on your stress dice. Those yeah. two successes yes. you landed are all on, on that rather terrifyingly large stress dice pool you have right now. More stress than die here. As you are oh, pushed no. into, <laughs> as you are definitely pushed into. Uh, yeah, my stress bar on the character sheet is yellow. I didn't know oh, it did that. <laughs> okay. Um, that's two successes. Yes, it is. One sec. Uh, so I need to check the stats here. Okay. All right. <laughs> you got, you got I'm just crying at this point. <laughs> just imagining this Doc is now sobbing. Over into the <laughs> yeah. Going through the med kit. Like, <laughs> <laughs> just like, get many, him, go, to got, sleep, go to sleep, go to how sleep. How many successes? <laughs> two? I only got two. Okay. <laughs> We're good. Uh, okay. 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 Um. All right, Martha. You lunge forward the moment you see the movement, Doc. You were anticipating it too. You see Nakamoto go for the kill shot. Martha immediately lunges forward and slaps that gun away. Um. Dropping her uh, grip on her own assault rifle, you basically lunge for his wrist and smack the gun out of his hand, using a lot of the unarmed training you received in the Marines for situations just like this. At the same moment, he pulls back immediately, seeing that you are in combat. As that happens, Doc tackles him from the side with a needle in his hand, getting ready to try to jam it to Nakamura, but Nakamura delivers an elbow to Doc's chin and sends your head snapping back, and you will take <gasps> one point of damage as he deflects the blow and sends an elbow into your jaw, you stumble ah. back a little bit, but you're not down. It is his turn now, though. 
Um, and he is not going to... He is actually going to... His, his gun has been knocked away from him, so he does the next thing on the action item list to get this job done. He immediately lunges for Martha's assault rifle, which is slung around her shoulder and yeah. shoulders into her and tries to get it. Now, there's also another assault rifle that is loose that is laying on a table not too far away. But instead of turning his back on Martha, he goes to grab at the assault rifle. This is also going to be an unarmed attack roll. Um, Martha, you can try to block this, but it will eat up your action for next round. You'll lose an action next round if you use your reaction here. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Um, question, What do, is he wearing... The black jumpsuit you mentioned? No, he's not wearing a black jumpsuit. He is wearing what looks like a professional looking, uh, like a, like he's not wearing his coat, but he's looking like he's wearing a professional security guard suit, basically. Is it Without armor? The, doesn't look like he has armor on. Okay, good to know. Um, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Okay. Um, so if you are not going to stop him, he is going to seize your gun. Oh, oh, wait, no. Uh, he, he's lunging for your, because you had to, in, you have your, your pulse rifle on you. But in order right, to right, right. disarm him, you had to let go of it. As soon as you've disarmed him and he shoves the dock away, he lunges for the gun that is now hanging around your chest. Yes. And it looks like his intention is to grab it and aim it while it is still slung around you at the man sitting in the chair. Um, who is starting to react, aware that his life is in danger. Yeah. Do I have a sense of, I know this is a little bit metagaming, so I'm asking within the game, would Martha have a sense of how quickly he could get this off before my, my next turn? Um, okay, so Martha is a combat veteran. He is moving with the skill of a professional killer. He is not moving like a dumpy security guard. The way he defended himself against you and Doc and the way he's lunging for your rifle Everything in your body tells you that this man has killed plenty of times before. So he could, in one turn, it seems like he could grab it, aim it, shoot it, shoot it. You're not sure about that. Okay, but it's possible. All you know is, is that he is possible. he is clearly a trained professional of some kind. Um, he is uh, not moving. He is not moving like some kind of rent a cop. He I looks don't like lose my action. Uh, but yeah, this keep in mind, he also used his action as well. He used his reaction to defend against Doc, so he's going to be down to one action next turn as well. Oh, we get two help? actions, you get two actions, but if you take a reaction, it happens out of the turn order and uh -huh. it counts, it'll count against what you do next round. So you have so to be I'll careful also... of how you use your turn, basically. So it's like I react now and then I'll get one action later, right? You'll get us, you get okay. slow action and fast actions, but uh, yeah, blocking. If you're attacked in close combat, you can choose to block the attack to avoid being hit. Blocking counts as a fast action. So Ooh. next turn, you won't get a fast action. You'll just get your slow action. Um, he, is, he is essentially, in, in order to grab the gun on you, he's having to use his slow action to attack you. And he used his fast one to defend against Doc. So he's out until his next turn. There's also another person in the room. Yeah, Kelly is also going to be moving as soon as this is done. Okay. I Siegs. But Siegs, is definitely, Siegs is reacting last, unfortunately. That's fair, but he's still in the room. That's, yeah. that, that's actually, I was going to ask, do I get a reaction by chance? Because I have a move in mind. Uh, you, no, because you've, you've already used your turn. Mm -hmm. So the only action you can take at this moment is uh, a reaction because you didn't use a fast action. You just tried to attack him. Right, well, I'll no, I would actually, I'm sorry. I would rule that in order to prepare that needle and attack him with it, you would have had to have used a fact check to draw it and then pull it off. You're right. You're right. So, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. I will. All right. I'm going to, I'm going to try to block. Okay. Then it is a close combat check. Okay. And you have to beat his roll on you. So here we go again. So that plus that don't tell me don't tell me yet so i can decide if i mm -hmm. want to use an ox point i'm holding no successes rolled okay um is it worth using i think we're close to the end of our ox points y'all is it worth using one here uh if you use one we should have three remaining i believe oh no uh i think less. Mm -hmm. uh, it's worth this it. is this is contested. also you have the option to push push yeah might be better yeah I'll if, push. It, if this is push contested it. gain a it's point against. of stress mm -hmm. yeah add that dive to the roll okay pushing it 
push, push. Oh, no, no. <laughs> uh, I have a panic. Okay, then the die roll immediately fails and you have to make a panic check. Oh, even though I got two successes? Mm -hmm. If you fail, if you ever roll, if it comes up a face hugger on a panic die, you've panicked. You have okay. to, well, you are threatened, you are under the threat of being into a pan going into a panic. So you have to roll on okay. that table. I'm good. It says keeping it together. You managed to keep your nerves in check. Barely. Nice. Okay. Nice. Uh, and that's taking into account. One thing I would say, um, you have to physically like manually actually mark down how many stress points you have for that panic roll. Did you do that? Out of curiosity, did it actually roll the right amount of stress that you have? It, for the panic roll? For the panic roll, yeah. Because you'll see on the character sheet, um, right underneath um, your strength, it'll say stress mm -hmm. level. Yay. How much How much stress do you have and what number did you roll? I, I have two now after that second push. It's there. Yeah, it's oh, okay, stress cool. level Just, two. Yeah. I found out the hard way that you actually have to manually input that. Um, but sometimes oh. it does it automatically if you get the rolls. So I wasn't sure. I can't sure. quite tell, to be honest, how many <laughs> rolled... Does it say just, two on your stress on your stress? Actually, meter? no. I think it just rolled one one panic die. I only that's okay. Yeah, yeah, no. Here. So you only it only needs to roll one panic mm -hmm. die. What number did the die roll? Five. And you have how many stress? Two. So that's but a I seven. Have nerves of steel. But you have nerves of steel. So you're fine. You do have nerves. So then you're good. Yeah, yeah, you're yeah. Good. You're totally good. Yeah, you hold it together. All right, cool. Um, so you don't panic, but he he moves with efficiency and experience and manages to wrestle the gun from you. As you go to stop him, he sends his elbow down into your elbow, which causes you to sort of overextend and shoulder into him, which he then uses to pivot on his right foot and sling you kind of backwards, kind of almost groating you with the handle of the strap to your pulse rifle, and he takes aim. Um, that's going to be the end of his action, though. Because he's out of actions now. <laughs> so are we still connected by the strap of my mm -hmm. you're okay. you're kind of lashed into this thing as he's grabbing for it. The two of you are in a tussle. Um okay. as that's happening, Kelly, manager Kelly, lunges for the gun that was knocked free and is gonna use his action to grab it up. And then he's going to turn. He picks it up and snatches it. And you can see the anxiety in his eyes. He wheels the gun around and points it directly at Martha and Nakamura. And you see him freeze. Like, he's not sure what to do. He just freezes and goes, huh. and that's going to be his action because he literally has no idea what to do next. Seeks! On Seeks' turn, Seeks lunges for his assault rifle. Um, he jumps out of the chair and throws himself forward. His leg gives out immediately and he falls. Um, I'm going to make a roll for him. Oh, he reaches for the assault rifle. His leg buckles underneath and he lets out a cry. As he stumbles forward, he hits the side of the desk, slamming his hand into the barrel of the gun, which cartwheels right over the top of his head and clatters to the ground and slides a few feet away from him off the floor. As he hits the ground, he looks up and sees it, glances up at Nakamura and sees Nakamura is trying to shift the angle so he could point the gun at him. And that's going to be the end of that round. While this is happening, everyone on headset can hear something going on. Cut back to <laughs> uh, top of the round. You're up, Martha. He's got you. He's got your assault rifle. He's got it in his hands and he's angling it. This round, he is going to be able to turn and squeeze that trigger. I would like to try to... Uh, use <clears throat> my pulse rifle as a melee weapon and just hit like pull it upwards so it kind of bangs him in the chin if you are willing to use a fast action to rest it from him uh no uh, no, no, no. I'm, I'm saying okay. if you are willing to use a fast action to rest it from him i will let you use it as a melee weapon because right now you don't have control of it he managed to grab it from you okay then i will just do close combat attack because i don't have a fast action i think okay you, you, uh no you don't that's yeah. right you gave it up okay. Um, it'll reset. It'll reset after this turn. What's up, Doc? Um, Cause you use your fast action block. Si since we shared one of the initiative, could I do oh, something? Yeah, you could go first. Yeah, right. Or can uh, we have to resolve Martha's action first? But yes. Oh, okay, never mind. Yeah, Cause I was gonna just try and hand the needle to Martha, cause she's in close distance with him now, and she's better at close combat than I am. I would only allow that if you're willing to switch the initiative order with Martha. And if you do, that's costing you your action for the round. Oh, oh, um, yeah. So. 
All right, and then you it couldn't do it until docs the next action. No, it would cost Doc's action for the round. Martha would to still get the needle, but 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 basically what would happen is uh, Doc would then be, you guys would permanently be switched for the rest of the round. So Doc would be going first every round. Uh, at the top. I'm willing to do that if you are, yeah. Martha, because yeah, yeah, totally. I'm useless in this situation, but the needle isn't. Okay, let's try that. I'm down. Okay. okay. So, so I'm says, gonna... uh, yeah, it says, oh, uh, you can switch it with another player. This can be done at the start of the fight or at the start of the next round, but never during the round. You and another player must be able to speak to each other, which you can. You basically scream at Martha, here, 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 take it. Um, and you'll be able to switch y'all's initiatives. So, um, all right. All right. I'm so, just gonna go, Martha. We are better than him, and just pass him the needle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> You're handed the needle. This means that whatever you do, Martha, you've surrendered the ability to stop him at this point, because he's going to be able to to fight. Because you're having to take, you're having to use uh, your action this round is going to be. If you're attacking him with the needle, you're going to lose your ability to stop him from using the gun. Do you see what I'm saying? Because in order to wrestle the gun back from him, you would have to use your action on that. This is a long way of saying, don't miss with that needle. Yeah, exactly. Because okay. if you do, he's got a full he's action still, to yeah. do what he wants to do with that gun. Well, I'm so. glad Siegs is actually moving a moving target now. Because yeah. I was going to yell, like, run or move to him. Like, don't just sit like, there. Yeah. <laughs> Unfortunately, um, like I said, he is critically wounded. So he is not moving right, as fast. Right. So understandable. Um, so go ahead. Ox what would you like to do? Ox Ox point. point for sure. <laughs> Please and thank you. And it's the okay. start of a new round, so I, I can this, use it, right? Yep. This is okay. Rogan 27's ox point you were using. So you get an <laughs> auto success on this. Broken. Go ahead and make your attack. He is gonna use his fast action to block since he doesn't have to worry about anything else. He's gonna try <laughs> to shoulder that out of the way. Uh, okay, strength and close combat and two threats in there. Okay, let's do this. Oh, God, please. Okay. Oh, that's a beautiful roll. Thank you. Three plus the ox. Four. Oh, you rolled two. Oh, oh, no, you, no, slam, no. you slam that needle oh. into the side of him and he, ah, as you slam it in and immediately squeeze down on that syringe as hard as you can. Side effects of injecting him with that speed be damned. And indeed, <laughs> he lets out a, a shout of agony as you push that liquid into his body at rapid pace. <laughs> um, uh, on his action, he is still going to get the attack because you drugged him. Yeah. That is not an instantaneous effect. However... I do think it makes sense that he is going to get a penalty on this check. Uh, and so I'm going to give him a minus two penalty oh. for both having this jammed into the back of his neck and to have these drugs already entering his system. Plus, his target has thrown himself out of the chair and is technically on the ground. And his he, gun is connected to another person. <laughs> yeah, so it's awkward. Now, now, normally, because he's in engaged range and his target is prone, he would get a plus two on this check because mm. his his target is a fish in a barrel, but because it's still slung up against you and it's an awkward push and the medicine is coursing through him and he's got the needle in him, he's going to get that minus two. So we're going to roll it now. Um, and all he needs is a success. So, uh, let's roll C and I'm rolling and he rolls one success. <laughs> So in a wild shot, he basically squeezes the trigger. Um, he is going to squeeze that trigger and hold it down. So I'm actually going to... No, I'm not going to give him that option. He Well, he has control of the gun. Yeah, but he used this... Mm, hold on one sec. I don't think he can do that. I think that's a fast action. And if it is, he can't do that. To swap uh, the he yeah, mode. he might he might switch he might swap onto the fire mode of your gun to try to go full auto. So um let me see if it uh this counts as a normal ranged attack, so he can do it. He can just do it. It counts as a ranged attack. He can just do it. So he's gonna add plus two dice to the roll. And uh 
Yeah, he's going to add, so I'm going to roll two more dice. No successes, just the one. Just the one. So... Does okay. Six have any sort of reaction here? Uh, that's the thing about ranged combat. Uh, he can't wait. Um, he actually. No, hold on a second. Take, Seeks might actually be able to attempt to dodge. Take this. cover. Yeah. He can't take cover. He's prone. Fuck. But that doesn't mean he can't do some <laughs> mad rolling around on the floor to try to get out yeah, of the way. Yeah, he's right by a desk. That's what he did to make the, the desk is in fun. front of him, so he can't yeah. use that. So it so, rolls right. <laughs> um, let's see. Yeah, I mean, he could try. He he can try. So Certainly. let's see. Survive. <laughs> Survive. <laughs> that movie, man. I swear to God. That movie is. <laughs> Something else. Oh, I gotta laugh because I'm stressed the fuck out. <laughs> I know. Okay. Um, can he? Mm, I don't know, John. I don't know where it's just Isa. <laughs> it's is it a slow? Can he? Yeah. No. No. He's just gonna take this. He's just gonna take it. Good news. His armor. He's got armor on. Holy shit, he rolled a success. Oh, rolled, my dog. He rolled two successes on that, so his armor is going to soak the damage of the assault rifle. Because he doesn't get any he doesn't get any net successes. Nakamoto only rolled one success. So the base damage of that rifle is two. It's gonna go right into his Kevlar and is going to light him up. But boy, oh boy, he lives. Um, you guys watch in horror as the two bullets slap hard into the guy's back. You can see the cloth of his fatigues explode outward from the impact of the bullet. Uh I just remembered. Colonial Marine pulse rifles are armor piercing, so his armor rolled is halved. Since he rolled two successes, I'm going to split that by one, and he's going to take a point of damage, which takes him to the critical hit table because he was already broken. So now I've got to roll on the critical hit. What a roller coaster this has been! Oh my God, <laughs> Doc, hadn't you already made a medical aid check though? I did. Didn't that so, unbreak him? Uh, it did, but taking that point of damage breaks him again. Right. Okay. So he's rebroken. He's not correct. But in, and as he gets rebroken, he goes back to the critical hit table. Yeah. Now he's back to the crit. But... Yeah. So that's why it could it could have been much worse, but it's not great. So with that, we are going to. Oh man, this is um, poor Seeks, not uh, yeah. not having a good time here. All right. Yeah. You know he's had a better Monday night. Yeah. I mean, could be worse critical injuries okay here we go i'm rolling i'm rolling 2d6 for the critical injury roll here once again asking here we go um uh, all right base roll he rolls a 55 that's not good. Oh my God. Um, he shoots the leg that was already injured. And you hear Seeks let out a cry as what was holding that leg together comes apart. Um, to make matters worse, bullets ricochet off the ground and you see uh, Kelly almost take a hit as the full auto machine gun just sprays upwards. And that is going to be the end of Nakamoto's round. It is now Manager Kelly's round and Manager Kelly fires the gun. And he's using Nakamoto's gun, so I have to look this up. It is. Martha's about to be shot, y'all. Or Doc. Who's or at Doc one is H aiming H at Martha at and Nakamura. H we haven't yet specified which. How much? Did he have bad aim? Uh, he doesn't have good aim. I know this in my heart. Holy shit, this game. 
Kelly screams, Nakamura! And he opens fire and <laughs> blasts Nakamura full of four rounds from a semi-automatic burst of this gun. Oh my God, am I okay standing right next to him? It all bullseyes into Nakamura's center mass because he was facing Kelly as you were slung back over his shoulder. As he's facing down at Seeks as Kelly had, he, uh, Nakamura had you slung over the back of his shoulder after you slammed that into him. Uh, the four rounds, they're not armor piercing, but you see that gun go off and apparently it's a semi-automatic weapon. Pop, 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 pop. And the shots shock manager Kelly. He's like, ah! And Nakamura just crumples. He folds like a puppet strings cut, just drops to the ground. <laughs> Hits the ground. Everyone in the other room hears gunfire multiple times, shouting Nakamura, the gunshot. The screaming persists afterwards as Seeks is grabbing his leg. He technically has a severed leg injury. Um, this is, he has one shift before he dies. It I'm immediately immediate making my way over to him. I'm, I'm, as soon as, as soon as the cutscene's over, I'm over okay. there. You rush over to him and drop down and he's ah, ah, grabbing at his leg. Doc, you take one look. You know the only reason why it looks intact is because it's still inside the, the leg sleeve of his fatigues. Um, Martha, you've seen this kind of injury numerous times. He's writhing back and forth. Manager Kelly is standing there with the gun staring at it in horror. And you can see his hand shaking as the smoke gently drifts from the barrels. You will get Tig over comms being like, report, hello? Tig, I need you. Come to the office quickly. I need medical aid for Nakamura. Stat. Uh, you get a Tig's hand on your shoulder. You good? Oh, yes, of course. I'll be done soon. Okay, cool. Um, Tig's gonna bolt. Okay. Uh, and Isaac will just calmly yep. be fixing everything. <laughs> Continue fixing everything. Like nothing All ever right. happened. Uh, I you... Up from, What's up? Am I on... So like he crumpled and I crumpled <laughs> like You're, no no you didn't crumple with him he was he was holding your gun but when he drops he lets go. Oh okay all right. So the That's dead okay. weight the weight yeah. that he was holding on to you basically released as he falls to the ground. Okay. He is just so at I'm... your feet as you're standing there with your pulse rifle swaying in front of you. I tuck it to a safe place and I look at Kelly. Kelly doesn't see you. He's just staring at the body. His eyes wide. He's just, <sighs> Okay. Take a breath. I had to stop him. He was shooting people. Of there. course, of course. Just point that to the ground right now. Okay. Point, point what to the ground? The weapon you're holding. Ah, he drops the gun as he realizes he's holding the That's gun. even better. And I <laughs> scoop it up. Clatters uh, to the ground. Yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll you, pick it up. Yeah. Okay. You move over and scoop up the gun. Taking a look at this, this gun is unique. It looks like a custom-made weapon. It does not look like the weapon of a security officer. It is some kind of unique handgun you've not seen before. Um, I'm going to check to see, if, is there like a, what's the gun word? Like a safety? Oh yeah, there's a safety on it. I'll put the safety on and I will tuck Click it into it on. my, my slide it whatever into your belt. for yeah. later inspection. This you slide it into your, help, your belt. Mark is gun now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I'm going to tend to Kelly because... Sieg's is being taken care of by one Kelly, and two doctors. Kelly looks like he failed a panic roll. He's standing there just going, I had, I had to stop him. I had to stop him. He was he was hurting people. I had to stop him. It's it's over now. You did good. It's over. I, I'm going to put my hands on his shoulders. And actually, I'm going to do counselor. Okay. Which I think affects everyone nearby. Okay. If I remember correctly. Counselor, once per turn where you can use the command skill to reduce the stress of oh another character within short range um i'd rather do it on doc though so i'm, I'm coming too so i will be able to i can I'll see be, the door I'll be, I'll the door would have opened i i could say that the tig charges in here the door yeah opened. i think we both should do it on doc though because doc is like you know what i'm saying and he's about to like perform medical surgery probably so I'm going to actually, here's what I'll do. I will be tending to Kelly and then turn to Doc and say, Doc, how are you feeling? How are you doing? You good? And that'll be uh, my... Physically yeah. concussed, emotionally stressed out, um, overall optimistic. This is a lot. You're amazing. You're amazing. And I'd like to do my command 
roll for that. I think okay. Tig comes in the room at that statement and goes, glad to hear it. Oh my God. Like she, Tig got no information on the comms and is like, okay, <laughs> pizza box, firing room. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. okay. Tig, okay. if you could assist our friend Nakamura, he does not get to get off this easy. Uh, uh, if you Tig might, Doc, Doc, you want to swap with me, actually? That's um, that's more my kind of injury. You're in good hands, Seeks. And I'm just gonna... Seeks can't. He is. He is oh, every oh. after every deep breath. It, it is followed up by a scream. Mm -hmm. So you guys are having to talk over that shouting yeah. as he is grabbing his leg. Uh, you move over to Nakamura and squatting down. You roll him over, and his eyes are wide open. He looks like he took four shots to center mass. Um, whoever shot him was either really lucky or really good at what they were doing, but it, it was dead center. Um, Tig, you don't have to make a medicine check. There is no way he is surviving that mm -hmm. shot. He looks like he has been drilled right through the center of his chest. Oh, I, I, no, swapped. I'm, I'm, I swapped. Yeah, I'm doing Nakamura. Oh, now. you're doing Nakamura? Yeah, Nakamura yeah. is Nakamura is definitely gone. Jesus. He, um, his eyes are wide open. He is expressionless. Look on his face. I failed my my command roll and also got a panic die. Oh, no. <laughs> Did okay. a panic roll, but I'm uh -huh. okay. It was only a two on the day. Martha. All of a sudden, I'm like freaked out. <laughs> yeah, I mean, because it doesn't, it really doesn't matter. No matter how many times you've been in combat situations like this, when shit like this gets real, you're equipped to deal with it better than most, but you're still a human being. And there was a lot of violence just now. So you managed to steady yourself. Yeah. But you don't believe with the words coming out of your own mouth. You kind of just. I think I'm like hanging on to Kelly weirdly too. I'm just not in a place to be counseling anyone. So yeah. it's not effective. Kelly, Kelly doesn't even seem to notice. He just looks like he's staring at Nakamura. Like it's a dream. Like it's a bad dream. He's just like shaking his head and going, I, I, I had to. I, I didn't have a choice. I, I, I turn him away and we both kind of freak out together for a moment. Okay. I'm, I'm just kind of standing over Nakamura and Doc says, I told you there'd be a day where you find yourself in a situation like this and to hope there wouldn't be a man like you in the room. I just close his eyes. I had four dice and I rolled four successes on him. <laughs> Ugh. Damn. Just meant to be. Um, Tig, go ahead and make your medicine check. So Tig is a field surgeon. This is her injury. Oh, I, I get a plus two to medical aid when someone is about gracious. to die from okay. a medical injury. That's brilliant. So he has yeah. a single shift. So he's dead in like a few hours. You can definitely yeah. stymie the bleeding. Let's see. Uh, it is a, yeah. So, oh, yes. um, uh, okay. So he, you are going to have to get him to surgery for sure. You can, you can buy him time, but he, you are going to have to get him to a med uh, medical mm -hmm. facility or he is going to die. Yeah. My also, what is my, you, you will stabilize him for now. Yeah. My surgical kit, um, will give, was it something else? There was, wait, no, hold on. There was something else. Uh, I don't remember what I'm thinking of. That's fine. Never mind. Um, oh, oh, my, I have. To save a life, Just Never mind. you suffer Never mind. a fatal critical injury. Someone must give you first aid before you fail a death roll. Now, here's the thing. NPCs function differently than PCs. So I'm essentially going to let you make a medicine check here to see if you can stabilize him. Okay. Instead of going through all the process. Players get a couple of steps with this. Player characters mm -hmm. do. So uh, go ahead and take those quick steps. Make a medicine check to see if you can stop it. I mean, I the have good... your surgical kit is uh, plus one to prevent death. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You should, you should, yeah, you should be getting the bonus for what you, yeah. I mean, this is literally what you did in the Marines, Tig. Yeah. Yeah. She's a field since, not, since Nakamura is uh, aced, can I help? Uh, yes. Uh, absolutely. Tig? Yes. What because because holding What's... him down is no small feat. The man is yeah. huge. And right yeah. now he is in full panic mode. So, I, I like to use calming presence to calm him down if I can. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. I'll allow that. Do I get a, uh, is it a mechanical plus for me or is it just? Um, uh, I think, I think the easiest way to do that is to add it as a mechanical plus. So then okay, add yeah. a single die to an assist roll on this. Yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. So go ahead and make your check. Okay. 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 
that's um how you like in five <laughs> the good news is is because that leg had already been had already had a tourniquet on it you got something to work with here because a lot of dead nerves a lot of tissue being closed off i mean there was already blood flow that had been stopped here there was already clotting taking place you've already got a little bit of a head start if he was going to receive a lethal critical injury this is the best one he could have gotten oh and tig God. you were in the shit, as they say yeah. yeah you have patched up this kind of injury before and you go to work um he starts slowly calming himself as best as he can, but he is veins popping out of his head and he is gritting and just goes, ah, ah. but he's nodding over. at you. He's, he's not fighting. He's just watching you take mm -hmm. and he seems like he understands who you are and what you're doing. And he walks. If it hurts, it's a good sign of it hurts. I'm so sorry. <laughs> like his just like head, murmuring every once in a while to him. <laughs> he just throws his head back. Um, mm -hmm. As this is all happening, <laughs> In the next room. <laughs> the lights come on. <laughs> as all the power starts to. <sighs> and as the lights come on. <laughs> she stands but a few feet away. How long she's been standing there, Isaac, you couldn't say. So focused were you on the repair. Maybe she was always there. She could have been part of the scenery. Assuming it's her, she wears what appears to be some kind of fully enclosed helmet, possibly used for EV, hard to say. She stands at a humble five, six, perhaps, in full black fatigues, but she doesn't have a weapon on her, except for the gloves that look like her fingers have split through the tops these elongated bony like fingers that have breached the tips of her gloved hands. And you're guessing that which dangles from those twisted looking bony like nails that extrude from the tips of those abnormally long fingers are likely strips of flesh that have been carried since her last, what you assume was only a few minutes ago, attack on the next poor individual. And a muffled voice emerges from underneath the helmet as you spot her, Isaac. And you hear that thin voice with this strange grating, deep growling type sound underneath it. They left you here all alone. I suppose they did. Would you like to roll initiative? Because that's what's happening now, Isaac. Oh, so roll it, roll it. Everybody else, if else you would, to do it pretty much. If anybody else, just so we can keep the initiative order in this, uh, just I'm not saying y'all are jumping into combat right away, but let's go ahead and keep initiative order and say, everyone, if you would please roll a d6 just so we know where you're at with the initiative. Okay. Two, four. Okay. She rolls a six. Isaac, you're going to get to go first. She takes a step towards you and she extends her hands. She clearly has hostile intent. What would you like to do? I would agree with that assessment. <laughs> um, hmm. What is immediately around me? Next to you, it. next to you is the power box, of course, that you just used. There is mm -hmm. a severed arm that has been dropped to the floor. Behind you, of course, is a body. The person with fatigues might have something on them, but you don't see anything else in the immediate area. There might be perhaps a, maybe an extinguisher somewhere nearby, but you would have to go looking for it to find one. There's no immediate tools that you can see in front of you. Um, well, in that case, hmm, and at what range is she right now? She is technically engaged right now, so she is right up on you. Okay, she's already there. Mm -hmm. Got it. Um, then I think 
I probably have to try to stunt for grapple, and that's not going to be easy with someone who uh, has done the things she's done. Uh, go ahead and make your check. That's going to be very hard, in fact. Close combat. Strength plus close combat. Oh, this is going to hurt. All right, now, wish me luck. <sighs> Remember, luck. I have a hard drive. <laughs> oh, goodness. One, two, three, four, five. Five successes. Okay. Yeah. Um, with the close combat, you are going to be able to successfully grapple her. Mm -hmm. But you get more stunt dice. So would you like to do anything else? I do. Goodness. Um, oh, I always feel so terrible about that, though. Because I don't want to... Um, do it. Well, no. I, I don't want to, is the point. Um, is there any way that we could run hit points as jujitsu rather than a striker art. Oh, rather than to hurt someone than to work toward a submission position. Don't worry. I'm not going to get D and D tactical on you. If you tell me you don't want to kill this person, then I will just assume that that's not what you're doing. If you right, beat but them also within under narrative, zero. since we need to sure. work down to mm -hmm. a resolution, I would, mm -hmm. would rather that not be something that's inflicting damage. And so analogous to jujitsu, just go for a submission position or or yeah uh, yes i don't want to hurt her i trying just to choke to her out stop her. okay yeah you can try to choke her out if you want but that is going to translate over into doing additional damage in addition to the grapple right check. if we're flavoring yeah. damage mm -hmm. as working toward yeah, yeah uh uh the equivalent of a well you know, one probably doesn't stop at that point, but yeah. I'm working toward a rear naked choke sort of vibe. Um, right. So to that effect, I can put, uh, I'll put the stunt on for the grapple and put the rest uh, toward the hit points. Okay, so tell me, give me an idea. Uh, how much damage total then? You um, have your- So it should yeah. be one at base, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then one toward uh, stunting for the grapple. Okay. Which means uh, the other three should be able to go into damage. Okay, so a total of three points of damage then, right? Or is I that think four? That's four, because the base damage uh, of one? Yeah, base damage one, you're right. Yeah, because you're unarmed. So uh, four points of damage, one sec. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. The poor guy she ripped apart is un unarmed. Mm -hmm. I have two. Okay. Shoot. Okay, one sec. So I'm sorry, remind me how much damage was that again? Four. Four? Okay. Uh, okay, you immediately go for a choke position. And Isaac, as you grab her, first of all, she's incredibly strong, but you were expecting that. You don't know what that's all about, but you were expecting that. She doesn't really fight you much, but as you grab hold of her and try to bring that arm around to choke her out, two things occur to you in that moment. First of all, that helmet and the Kevlar around her neck is giving her some protection against the squeeze. Not much, but enough. Um, the other thing you notice too is, is despite the enormous amount of pressure that you put on her, she is resisting you. Um, that is going to be your action for this round as you grapple her and start squeezing against her. It is not going to be her action. And on her action, okay. I'm so proud of these dice I'm looking at right now. Like I never want to roll them again. Um, she twists around with Humans should not be able to do what she just did. The bones in her upper part of her torso seem to dislocate or they weren't attached the way they were, but they're bony and it's almost like grappling somebody who's not exhibiting the same humanoid <sighs> physiology as a normal person you would grapple. She twists easily and turns around to face you and you can hear inside that helmet just <clears throat> something swelling growl something inhuman 
her hands grab your head. And in that moment, Isaac, you become aware that an enormous amount of stress is suddenly being put on your cranium as she begins to compress on you. And you hear ah, this hissing scream from underneath the helmet. And I am now going to roll seven base dice. Okay. Let me know if at any point I get fast action against that or otherwise how we're resolving that piece of a grapple, etc. Cetera, um, et cetera. You can yeah, you can try to you can try to, to to defend to get keep in mind if you decide to block against it, we'll release your grapple. But you can block this if you if you want to. But it'll require you basically trying to stop her hands from crushing your head. Okay. Um just so I'm what am what is the what does grapple accomplish mechanically here? I think um, I it's basically going to prevent her from leaving engaged with you. Grapple, okay. um, let me Great. go ahead and just, I've actually Fantastic. got the rules for grapple in front of me. I do so like me... using them, so that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, I mean, it's a great way to stop people who are being irrational from doing irrational things, unless they are corporate I mean, whatever. look, I don't <laughs> want to punch people's chests in. Right. That's nope. kind of more... That is mm -hmm. fair. Um, okay. Uh... Hold on one sec. Oh, I can just... Haha, I've got Demi playing. Who could ask for anything more? Okay. Grapple? Uh, oh, uh, need to win an opposed close combat roll against you to break free. Can't perform any other action until they've done so or until I'm broken and let them go. Um, which works. When humans and synthetics. Cool. Uh, hold on one sec. Oh, uh, one sec. Uh, yeah, she is not, she is not subject to that grapple check rule. So she is able to move in not your grasp enough. and twist around in it. No, not human enough. And she twists around to, to, to attack you. So yes, you can, if you're willing to let go of her to try to deflect this or block it, you'll be able to. Hmm. Okay. Uh, okay, so for the purposes of a non-human and synthetic, it's uh, maintaining engaged range is what the grapple did. I'm trying to figure Base. out what dropping it to block it accomplishes. Yeah, so at this at, at this point, yeah, I would say at this point, Isaac's probably realizing grappling isn't going to help you with her. But it would keep her from, say, running to kill Tig or somebody else around you if you guys were, if she was a, unable to break from your grapple. But the the effects of... She would be able, she doesn't have to escape your grapple to take an action. But if she was going to get away, I would make her make a mobility check. Because And that's what I would get to oppose with. with yeah, essentially, Got like she, she won't be stopped by you, but it's not going to be easy for her either. I would have her movement or something along those lines to simulate her, her ability to pull or push past you, but her inability to get rid of you unless she turns her attention on you to pull you off of her. Okay. All right. So what would you uh, like to do? It, um, then it sounds I'm like uh, she's about to roll seven base dice. She did. Okay. How many went oh. through? If you're not trying to stop it. Yep. I have rough neck to roll. Um, okay. It's going to do two points of damage. And it automatically triggers a critical injury. Uh, one point in a crit. Okay. So you'll take a single point of damage. Mm -hmm. And Isaac, the critical injury, according to this table that I rolled on, um, she crushes your skull. It's an auto critical hit on a 64. Um, are we not doing the synth crits then? It is synth crits. Okay. So, um, one sec, because it's actually going to, it's going to sustain. So what it would do then. On a synth critical hit, because it is mm -hmm. still a. Uh, oh, here we go. Okay. Uh, could you? I don't have the page bookmarked. Can you remind 111. me? One eleven. One eleven. PDF page one eleven. Yeah, thank you. Um, uh, 
I'm sorry, I should have said book page 111, PDF page 115. Um, so I'm going to treat this like head dislocation. All right. Thank so, you. Uh, so that means all fast actions now become slow actions. Um, <laughs> Isaac, in, in something that would absolutely kill a human being immediately, your skull is crushed underneath the power of her grip. Um, Android blood, the synthetic blood spatters all over her face as she compresses your head. You can hear all the terrible sounds, Isaac, as you immediately become aware of the damage. Your perceptions skew suddenly as you feel your face and the upper part of your body compress. Um, the room spins a little bit. You don't lose consciousness, though. But immediately you feel the servos and the mechanisms in your body starting to become incredibly sluggish on response as the synthetic nerve endings leading up into your neck are heavily damaged from the attack. In that moment, you kind of are still gripping her and she holds you there staring straight ahead. You can see uh, the synthetic blood dripping off of her helmet as she holds you. Um, you get the impression what might be happening on the other side of that helmet is surprise. It's a synthetic. Now, as that is happening, all of you hear the sound of Isaac's earbud that connects them to your comms units you heard isaac speaking to someone and then you heard a screeching hissing sound and then painful feedback as suddenly isaac's comms go dead isaac 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 doesn't respond what is going on today I am elbows deep in uh, uh, Nigor. I'm going to need somebody to make sure that they're okay. I'm on it. Can I use that as banter before they go? Uh, if you're willing that to be your... I, I, you've all rolled initiative, so if you're willing for that to be your action for the round, yes, yes. I can let you do it. Yeah. Okay, cool. So go ahead. Okay. Um, drop two. Anybody who wants to in the room oh, can drop you. two stress. Amazing. That is Doc, cool. would you like to drop two stress? Do it. <laughs> <laughs> Take your medicine. <laughs> Okay, Doc. I'll drop two stress. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you? What are you doing? Okay. Uh, I'll let you take actions before we get back to I Isaac. Despite the destructive <laughs> critical injury, Isaac is still very it's much in this fine. fight. It's totally fine. <laughs> Just have a skinny head now. Yeah, Isaac's going to require repair. A little bit. We gotta put right. the scar back on. Yeah. Can't lose the cool scar. Something as silly as a head crush. <laughs> uh, what are you doing? I need I need actions. Who's 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 turn is it? I'm letting you guys take actions now because Isaac went and oh, she okay. went. What are y'all doing yeah. outside? I did my banter is was my mm -hmm. turn, so you guys do what you gotta do. Okay. You gotta decide I'll, it's all happening in seconds right now. I will go to where Isaac is with briskness. Okay, you will charge into the room where Isaac was last seen, and what are you doing, Doc? You're staying where you are? I am... Does Kelly... Kelly looks really? absolutely... Kelly looks borderline catatonic. Okay. He he has taken a couple of steps back, and he just keeps repeating over and over in his head, I, I, had a I didn't have a choice. I had to stop him. I had to stop him. I had to, he was going to hurt people. I had to... I had to he'll, he'll be all right. He'll be fine. He'll be okay. Oh. I'm picking up the gun he dropped. I'm going after Martha. You're picking up which gun? There the gun he two. dropped and I'm going after Martha. Oh. Okay. The, I think so I have it. Crap. He has it. Yeah, but there do. is a gun. The assault rifle from the UPP former Marine known as Seeks is laying on the ground. Oh, right. Okay. Yeah. I'm picking it up and I'm going after Doc, Martha. Doc, I believe, I'm so sorry to do this, but I believe I got a mechanical advantage from you helping me on this roll. So I, I, I got think a plus. The, I got I, a plus one for Doc helping me with the surgery. Um, you, oh, so you're making the argument that Doc can't leave or else? Yeah. I mean, I don't rule another way if you want to, but that was how I understood that was that you were helping me with No, this but you know what? That reminded me of something I'm going to need, I was going to do first. I meant to do this earlier, but Doc, mm -hmm. gain a story point. Okay. For putting your hands up and almost getting shot for trying to heal Seeks yeah. when you first met him. Yeah. And Tig, gain a story point. For making that call just now, because I agree with you, 
And it is going to actually, I'm going to rule that doc, if you leave right now, it's going to countermand oh, the I'm progress so that was made. <laughs> Makes sense. Okay. Sorry, buddy. Holding this leg, you're keeping him from bleeding out right now. Sorry, okay. buddy. So you're going to have to stay there. You've been so bad in the mail today. Tag. I'm so sorry. <laughs> Martha, when you charge into the next room, all the lights are on and holding Isaac off the ground and lifting Isaac about a foot off the ground above her head. You see Isaac has grabbed hold. The sight is horrifying. Whoever she is, she is in full armor. It looks like she's wearing Kevlar and like the black fatigues, but her face is completely masked. It looks like she's wearing like a UV or I'm sorry, an EV helmet with the mask currently down. Isaac is spewed Android blood all over her and is showing signs of a destructive critical injury. It looks like she has compressed Isaac's head and you see it. It looks like Isaac's head has collapsed. The cranial portion, the upper part of Isaac's head is folded in under the sheer pressure of this woman that is holding Isaac up. Isaac is still very much active and looks like is trying to pry her away. Her helmet slowly turns and regards you. Uh, That's going to take us to the top of the round because I'm going to oh. say your action was running in here. Isaac, you're up. She's yes, got and you. apparently I'm up. So yes. sorry, Noir. I, I, just if, I do have one in the initiative order. Uh, that is correct. And you are now in the scene. So you would technically go first. Okay. Uh, to answer the immediate question you are undoubtedly going to ask. If you roll well enough, yes. But keep in mind, <laughs> uh -huh. there is a risk. Yeah. You are shooting directly at where Isaac is. But well, you're a trained Marine. Yeah. No risk. So you shoot Isaac. Um, are they in profile to me? It's another question. They're at angle from you. So Isaac almost gives her partial cover. Right. Okay. But I do have like a, sh a shot at her. You do have a shot. Yes. Okay. You do I'm going to take shot. that shot and. Ay, Dios. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I can do to like get a better angle or. But I think that's what all. Just um, you could it's use fast action, you could use a fast action oh. to move, and and basically I would say that would function as an aim. Uh, well, I also get what is it? I have some fun thing. Oh, that's reloading, rapid reload, uh, quick draw. I have quick draw. Oh goodness! So I. Oh no! Uh, no, you're. Well, good. I guess that, that doesn't matter with the aim though. So yes, okay, great. I'll take that if I can move and aim. Um, I'm treating the aim as a movement because you're you're not actually getting closer or farther away. I'm nope. just treating it as like you shift laterally to That's try to get I'm a better thinking. aiming shot. Absolutely. So okay, awesome. Um, aim, I believe, is going to give you a plus two bonus, mm -hmm. or is it a plus one? I see plus two here. Range free short run. Uh, the, it's not dim light anymore, so you're not going to be suffering from that. Um, it is short range. So you get no penalties for this. That is optimal range. It's aim shot plus two. So go ahead and make your roll. Okay. So I add two for the aim. Mm -hmm. And then I do, it's a still ranged though, right? It is. So make your range. range. And don't forget to add the bonuses. It's a plus two, I think, because you're using the uh, plus two. Colonial Marines assault rifle. Okay. Here we go. Uh, I got one. We're almost at the end. Do we have any? left oh. do you have any ox points oh, left god um you do I think they have like one or two you have you do have one <laughs> At left least two yeah yeah kerrigan 29 thank you kerrigan 29 i will take this so that'll be two successes yeah so that's going to be i think the base damage is two plus one it's armor piercing sounds right so it's yeah. going to split her armor rating in half which is considerable. So now I'm going to roll her armor rating as you open fire on her. 
Y'all can't see it, but Sam has been filling up our group chat with, this is amazing. I love this. This is so great. I, this is the best. <laughs> this is so alien. <laughs> best day ever. I'm having so much fun. <laughs> Everything about this is genuinely fantastic, and this might be my favorite. Failed every single dice roll on the armor. <laughs> she is going to take a total of, you rolled, let's see, it was two plus an additional. So she's going to take three points of damage, I believe. Is that correct? I think I so. so. Two base damage. Two base plus, plus one, one additional damage. Yep. And then. So, yeah. Yep. Um, Do the two I mean, successes count for any damage or one of them? It's net successes. One Got so it. one okay. of them is to hit and, the, and everything after is, yeah. So you open up with the pulse rifle and it makes that signature pulse rifle sound that we all know from the films. As you just open it up, it immediately fills up the room as the barrel flashes with flame, squeezing the trigger again and again as you attack the creature that's on Isaac. She takes the rounds again and again to the chest and you see spatter behind her and she stumbles and says, nice shot, Marine! As she continues to hold Isaac in place. And that is where we are going to stop. Great. That was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. I was <laughs> muted. That line made me scream out loud. Just <laughs> <laughs> so that All right. well. That was great. <laughs> so oh. experience points. Oh God. <laughs> <laughs> You all get one from being here. Woo! Did you risk or sacrifice something to further your personal agenda? You guys have to tell me, was your personal agenda involved with any risk or sacrifice you took this game session? Do you think it was? Yeah. Dr. Kid was just to save people. All right. I mean, he failed, but he tried. Mine is to <laughs> spy on people, so yes. So Doc gets an XP, and uh, yeah, okay. Uh, if you, yeah, I guess... But UPP-ness was interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Did you risk your life for your buddy or PC? I'm going to rule that each one of you took risks tonight. Each one of you took a risk for the party tonight. So everyone's going to get XP for that. Did you make a panic roll? Yeah. That's a hard yes. <laughs> and... Uh, did you overcome a dangerous event? You have not. And technically, well, it does say, did you overcome a dangerous event using violent or nonviolent means? You did technically, yes. Nakamura. Yeah, it's just there are more violent events. It yeah. was an NPC <laughs> that ended it, but you engaged in it and you brought in it. I would say you brought it. I mean, it would have in, Nakamura would have ended it if you hadn't acted. Did you make a significant revelation or discovery? I'm going to say yes. It kind of yeah. came to you, but yes. Um, did you perform an extraordinary action of some kind? Uh, I'm going to say Doc definitely. You Doc did. Um, I, I'm, I'm also, this might seem a bit of a stretch, but if I can be honest with you, knowing what they know as a meta, as a player, knowing full well the decision that they were making, knowing full well they were being left alone, knowing full well that they would be in danger, I'm going to rule that, that Isaac definitely, definitely performed an extraordinary action, decided to stick alone in this dangerous situation and stick to that repair and got security online before that violent attack. Um, did you perform any money? He didn't earn any money, not yet. Um, so that is going to wrap it out for the XP tonight. Okay. Player check-in, how are we doing? Great. Great. <laughs> All right. That is going to bring an end to this session of Beacon. Ooh. Join us next Monday. One way or the other, this gets resolved. We'll see you then. Until then, this is the crew of the Ilios signing off. It's such a headache. <laughs>